Alrighty, how you doing? Welcome back. We're going to continue our journey through Kare, City Bot of Traps. Got my uh, tea here. I also have a coffee too from earlier, which... Gross. You spelled completing wrong. I don't... I don't care. Where? In the tweet? Or here? Because I gotta be honest, in the world of 2022, spelling mistakes no one cares about anymore. They really just don't. Back in like the 40s, or like the 50s, it's like, oh, you misspelled that, a minus five points on your grade. Who gives a shit? Nobody cares. We all are talking to each other. We all we know what we're trying to say. Nobody cares about how if you spelled a word right. You're not going to put a red pen through it and put like, oh, excuse me. You know what I'm saying. We, we both know what, what I'm trying to say. Am I going to delete the tweet? No, I'm leaving it. The tweet is staying as is. <laughs> if we all started not caring, we would make a new language. All right, but okay, I get it. If, if, I, if I was sending like a formal letter to something, to someone, I would want to make sure it didn't say like completely. But hey, we, we, I'm just a live stream. It's just me hanging out. Tweet it again. Yeah, for those of you that uh, are, have asked about it or wondering about it, the thing that I was talking about on Thursday has been announced, and it's going to be a wild one. Uh, I did not know, I did not know my team until an hour ago. Uh, this is going to be crazy. So Myth is putting on a Black Ops 2 event, and I'm on one of the teams. And, uh, I hope I do okay. I haven't played Call of Duty in, like, eight years. <laughs> go look, go to Myth's Twitter and look at the two teams. I am going to be the worst fucking person on this team. I'm actually, I'm actually quite concerned about it. I'm going to be, I'm going to download Black Ops 2 tonight and just play it all night. And just try to not embarrass myself in front of like a hundred million people tomorrow. <laughs> Practice now? No, I don't. I uh, I'm not practicing right now. Do you need some coaching help? I might. Uh, I may need some pointers. Am I gonna stream it? I I, I don't know. I'll. Uh, I gotta talk to Myth and see what the plan is. I'm not 100% sure, but we'll see. Is that 6 p.m. tomorrow? I believe that's 6 Pacific. Let me check again. Yes, tomorrow at 6 Pacific. I believe it'll at very least be on Myth's channel. I would assume. Who is redacted? I don't know. I genuinely don't know. I'm being serious. I have no idea. <laughs> I need to... I... Look. All I remember from Call of Duty is hold, hitting shift to sprint and then right-clicking and... And then dying. That's the only thing I remember. I don't remember anything else. I remember people just dropping down to prone. And then I remember dropping a grenade. Because I was one of those assholes. What was that thing called again? Is whenever every time you died, you dropped a grenade on the ground and, and people wanted it banned from the game. It was like, please ban this from the game. Get rid of this. It doesn't need to be in the game. And I, I would get kills just because I died near like somebody. Yeah, I was one of I was one of those people. And I was one of those people 
And at the same time, I also was mad at those people. I had, yeah, martyrdom. I had martyrdom equipped and I would kill somebody with martyrdom and die from it and go, fuck that loser. And I had it equipped. So that's my experience. <laughs> I hope I I hope I do okay. I'll try. Dude, you're gonna be comic relief. <laughs> Should I just bring a, a slide whistle to this event tomorrow? I'm gonna go 0 and 15, right? I might as well be like I should make sounds and shit like I'm, I'm just gonna be the jester. Watch me play like crazy, though. That would be fun. Say happy birthday to my friend, please. Hey, Mondas' his friend. Happy birthday. No one else is getting that, by the way. Do what you're good at. If you're good at something, never do it for free. <laughs> you see, but that's the problem, right? I've told you guys this before, and I mean this. Okay, if I'm if I'm like the weird clown guy that makes sound effects with his mouth, that's what I do over here. But if I go into an environment where I'm on a team with people and I and I'm just like people are going to be like shut this fucking guy up. Shut this guy up. I don't want to hear this guy talking anymore. You know what I mean? Like you we can't bring that to somebody else's house, right? Usually, that's how I feel. I can't, right? I have to at least dial it back a little. And I'm not even that, I don't do that that often anyways. Can we give, my, I'm gonna give myself a little bit of credit. I don't do that anyways, but I don't wanna do that in a lobby with other people that might be streaming and they don't wanna hear my horse shit. <laughs> you need to do it more. Why else would they invite you? Oh, come on. Come on. <laughs> like, Myth is running the event. And he's got, like, a clipboard. He's, like, spent a bunch of time planning this. And he comes over to our lobby, and he's like, What the fuck, man? German's not making fucking sound effects. What? That's what he's doing here. What? <laughs> come on, man. He's supposed to be doing sound effects. <laughs> No, it'll, I, I'm, I'm kidding. It'll be a good time. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. It should be a lot of fun. I'm going to say I might surprise a lot of you. I really might. The wrong Discord. It's because you try to seem normal in front of the other streamers. That's not true. No, it's not. It's because you're a vegan furry. <laughs> yeah, but I, I actually think it's going to be a lot of fun. I, I'm I obviously Myth uh, reached out and it was just cool. Myth's a really cool dude. A really, really funny guy. So I'm I'm honored to be invited in the first place. So I'm I'm gonna try to bring it my all. I'll, I'll bring it what I can. And by the way, this has just been going in my head the whole time. I've not heard anything else, and I'm sitting there going, "This sounds weird." It's just, it's just cats. It's just in sorcery. Well, now they're not there anymore, and you don't you don't hear them. All right. So again, we're doing. Uh, we're gonna try to beat. Part two, we're gonna we're gonna try. We're gonna we're gonna absolutely get to the end of part two. Sorcery part two today. Black Ops two event tomorrow. It's gonna be a wild time. I'm gonna do my best. And then green screen part two movie night is on Saturday. Very cool. You guys ready? Cast some sorceries already, man. I'm, I'm going, I'm going. I, I want to talk about that. 
there's a, there's, I got a cool event um, I'm participating in tomorrow. I'm going to talk about it. All right. So let's uh, let's recap on what happened yesterday. If you remember. Uh, for those of you that are uh, VOD Andes, um, I would watch that first because you're going to get a big spoiler here. We got to the gate, the north gate of Kari, which is the end of part two. But all these animals are just talk are talking over me. When you get to the end of Sorcery Part 2, if you haven't technically completed the game, it gives you an option, gives you the choice to either just go on and say, fuck it, who cares? Or be able to go back and try to get the rest of the spell lines, and that's what we did. So we are still looking for one more line, and it's down here, where we have not been down here at all. We have to somehow make our way from here down to here, or make our way from here to here and restart it one more time down here. Are you ready? The last thing we did, we went to the council meeting with Flanker. There were nobody, there's nobody there for the council. Bro, play something normal. The, what is it? Play something normal? What do you mean? <laughs> we're playing Black Ops 2 tomorrow. That, uh, that's, that's, uh, that's pretty normal. All right, the docks. I would call that a pretty a pretty normal video game, wouldn't you? No, Call of Duty is not like a, a. What would you consider a normal game? That's a genuine question. What would you consider a normal game? I, I played Multiverses. Multiverses was a few days ago. Black Ops 3, Destiny 2. I don't, I don't want to play those games. Sorcerer 2 is normal. Yeah, what's what's so abnormal about this? Alright, so we're at the docks. Uh, you return to the docks, you still need to find somewhere to stay for the night, which... If you remember... Oh, I st it's still nighttime. We haven't gone to bed yet. Sleep in an alley, sleep by the river, sleep in the market, or the meat and cleaver had that, um, that musical act. It was there, right? We can head over here. That's where the musicians were. We met the band down here. We shook their hand and it was like, yeah, come hang out at the uh, meet and cleaver later. So let's do that. Hey, what's a no all games are normal games. <laughs> you know, you know what a normal, an, an, okay, an abnormal game would be like, I don't know, how many times can you do a backflip in a row? Like that, that's not that's like kind of kind of abnormal, right? We're like playing like that's like me and who can do more backflips in a row. It's not like a normal game. <laughs> How many times can you do backflip in a row? I don't know. None. That's just gymnastics. Well, no, that would be abnormal for me to just turn the camera on and do that. Like, hey guys, we're gonna play. How many backflips can I do in a row? It's like that's what are you doing? This is like a video game. This is like a, just a normal game with like normal rules. That would be abnormal. That would be weird, right? So that's what. What are you talking about? All right, let's go. Let's go. Oh, I have no, I'm not talking about like w abnormal games versus a normal games. All right, we're in the meat and cleaver. The meat and cleaver is a small grimy place. It looks like it's been converted from a wood store. Rats run across the floor, and the customers at the tables look haggard and tired, as if just smelling the air is draining them. Damn. By the bar, a stooped and hunched innkeeper wipes his beer mugs with a filthy handkerchief. Okay. Alright, uh, Jerry the Musician's over here. Which is the person we want to talk to. So, I mean, we're gonna go hang out with them, obviously. How many backflips can you actually do? I used to be able to do one. I definitely can't do that anymore. You look for Jira, but eventually, it is he who spots you, waving from a particularly dark corner of the inn. Come and sit with us. We've got food to share and company. 
Sit, but don't eat. Sit, reject the offer. Why would I reject the offer? This guy's been nothing but kind to me. Why would I be like, no, fuck you. I'm gonna sit. Thank you. You follow him to his table and sit down with three others that you recognize from the performance at the fair earlier. Their table is spread with uh, delicacies. Fried hill fox feet. Curried balai beans in a thin green plant in oil that might be stewed grass. You eat greedily. So, how have you enjoyed your day in Kare? The city is filthy. Jira looks at his friends and they all laugh. <laughs> it is. But it is no one's fault. Everyone who lives here generates just as much mess as everyone else. One of the dancers, a tall, thin woman with a thoughtful expression, says, The problem is the poverty. Everyone is so poor. There's no one poor enough to clean the streets. Jira introduces his friend with a gesture. This is Almira. She's a dancer, but don't let that fool you. She's a thoughtful soul, if ever there was one. Almira nods her head. The only choice is poop water. Yeah, they're pumping poop water from the river and drinking it and pretending it's beer. That's not that's not good. Alright, greeting. Almira smiles once and then heads back turns back to her food. Jira crunches on a battered skunk bear toe. So, are uh, you staying here tonight? Yeah. For free. Yeah, I go, yeah. And then I look at him and I kind of cock my head to the side. For free. I just look at this guy. I'm like, for free. The guy's in like, come on, man. He nods. You're a brave man. I don't know many as would risk the beds at the heated reaver or whatever this place is called. The owner makes good rat bone fritters, but he's a few giblets short of a casserole. <laughs> A few giblets, well, a few giblets, a few giblets short of a casserole. Where should I stay? Now, the other inn isn't bad, though I hear that Vic tends to scoop up the drunks. He nods meaningfully. Oh, Vic's a friend of mine. Oh, that's what happened. Okay, yeah, that's what happened last time. Well, then I won't drink. All right, let's get some info. Who is he? Vic? I wouldn't say Vic was a good man to know. Or rather, there's many who know him and wish they didn't. Vic's a bad man. Head of the slave ring and looking to be head of a lot more. Or so I hear. Almira agrees. They say he intends to overrun the council. That's impossible. But if he's planning it, I suspect he has a trick up his sleeve. What kind of trick? I have no idea. But Vic is a very clever man, indeed, and not afraid to work in league with sorceries and the darker arts. Jira tries to lighten the tone, raising a toast with his mug. I need to find a blind beggar. That's what I'm looking for. This is accurate, right? Maybe they know where he is. We're looking for Theta. I need to find a blind beggar, one of the nobles. Jira looks blank. You might find such a man somewhere in Kare. You might find a hundred such. Hope you know what your beggar looks like, because otherwise, how would you know you had the right one? It's late. We should be going. Almira nods and takes his hand. Arm in arm, they bid you farewell and leave the inn. All right. So am I, am I sleeping here, or am I going to go sleep outside somewhere? Should I sleep outside or sleep in here? I feel like I'm... Want to get, like, attacked in here or something? I'm going to get attacked in here. I'm, uh, should I go sleep outside? All right, how much? what is it? How much does it cost? I'm going to get attacked. All right, you march over to the bar. The innkeeper stands up as straight as he can to greet you. How is trade here? The man peers at you. Trade? This is a docks and I sell beer. Trade is the same as it's always been. I know the city is supposed to be going to the dogs and falling apart, but I don't believe it. People are always saying that. But they're still in here most nights, drinking their beer. Hmm. Uh, I need food. How much is food? We're out of food, I'm afraid. He points to a group in one corner. 
Those lot ain't everything. Musicians. They're always hungry, but good for drinking. Oh, no, I did eat. I already did eat. Never mind. I, I ate all the food. <laughs> I'm sitting there going, oh, man, I'm hungry. I haven't eaten anything all day. It's like, I just ate. I literally just ate all their food. And I'm coming looking for more? I'm the problem. I'm one of the musicians. I was part of their group. All right, what about a room? Do you have rooms? The innkeeper nods and smiles a wide, almost wicked smile. We do. Destin Kare, if I say so myself. People who stay here never stay anywhere as good again. Four gold pieces. Yeah, that's fucked up. That's a weird way to... Why would you... That's weird. That was a weird way to say that. Should I just leave outside? I'm going to sleep outside. I'm going to go sleep in the water. Yeah, I'm out of here. No, I don't... No. I was specifically told not to stay here by the musicians. They literally said, don't stay here. He was like, hey, don't sleep there. This place is fucking dump. Don't sleep there. I'm, I'm going to listen to him. I'm not sleeping here. You walk back out to the docks. All right. Uh, back to the docks. You're running out of options. Sleep in an alley, sit by the river, or sleep in the market. All right, I don't know which one. I don't know which one to do. First poll of the night. One is sleep in alley, two is sit by the river, and three is sleep in the market. I'll get the poll up right here. One, two, or three. Where are we going? One is the alley, two is the by the river, and three is in the market. I'm not sleeping in that inn. No, fuck that. What do you feel? By the river. By the river? Isn't, isn't that like out in the open? I'm just going to be lying on the beach in the open. Isn't that bad? You really want me to do that? Okay. Kare is renowned city as thieves and villains, and has not earned that reputation for nothing. To sleep outside is to invite disaster. Instead, you seat yourself by the edge of the fat, slug-like Fibaji River, where the air is by turns fresh and stomach-churningly rancid, both of which should help you to stay awake through the long watches of the night. Oh, I'm not going to sleep. Hey! You sit watching the river as it creeps past. Today has been a successful day, and you've made progress towards learning the lines of the Northgate spell. After a while, you notice a light on the far bank. Oh, it's because I'm staying, I'm tanking the whole day, that's why. Okay. Uh, let's watch it. It is a lantern. For a while, it moves forward and backwards, then is joined by several more. Voices call to one another. They're looking for escapers, but escaping from what you cannot tell. As dawn breaks, one calls, Vic will be pleased. Clear night tonight. That name again. Landragor's friend. The men disappear as the sun begins to rise. Your long vigil has left you tired out, but still in one piece. I got the health back. I got the health back. That's I'm good. That's I'm I'm good to go. All right, the next morning. As the sun breaks over the rooftops of Lower Kare, the city looks clean and bright, like a stone polished to a shine by a fast-flowing river. The effect lasts for a beautiful moment, and then the people of Kare begin to stir, opening their windows to throw out their slop. Shouting and cursing at each other as they do so. <laughs> that's so... The word slop. That's like one of my... That's one of my favorite words, can I just tell you? The word slop is, is just... It has so much weight behind it. It can be used as... As an insult. It can be used as... 
a, a means of, of like, of, 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 of endearment, right? Oh, what, what, yo, you're gonna, you're gonna serve me this slop? I said, that's not endearment. That's fucking horrible. That's really insulting. It's only as an insult. <laughs> oh, hey, yeah, give me, give me some of that. Imagine calling something slop at a dinner. It'd be like, dude, what the fuck did you just call my cooking? Oh, so what I have here is I have a pan-seared salmon. Uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a big salmon guy. And I have uh, broccolini, uh, very lightly torched uh, to a nice crunch on the outside. Yeah, give me some of that slop. <laughs> That's so gross sounding. All right, uh, whatever. It's only used as something gross or an insult. Okay, the effect lasts for a beautiful moment. Then the people come out. The city is stirring again. Uh, now we're going to head for the bridge. The market traders begin to set up their stalls, fighting and threatening each other to get the spots closest to the ships. A few sly types, probably pickpockets, begin to prowl the shadows between the stands. Oh, well, real quick. Um, should I play that, uh, that new horror game that just came out? What's it called? Something the assistant or something? Yeah. The the mortuary assistant. Yeah. All right. No spoilers. I'm gonna play it. I'll play it. Um. I'll play it like in the next uh, next stream or two. Yeah. All right. I'll play it. You're gonna die playing that. I'll play it. It's really glitchy and buggy. Well, maybe it'll be fixed in the next, like, I don't know. Maybe they'll do a patch for it. Yeah, we'll do that in the next, uh, the next few days. Okay, cool. Are you going to do the next parts of sorcery? Well, here's the thing, right? I, I want to make sure that it's not just only sorcery. Because it's been pretty much a focus for the last couple of weeks. So, we'll, we'll break it up. If you want to watch the sorcery stuff, it'll probably it'll probably be there. But uh, there'll be um, some more stuff in between. So yeah, I'm look. I, I would. I'm. I. I don't care if there's you know less viewers here or anything. That's fine. This is one of my favorite games of all time. I'll play this all day. Right. That's fine. I get it too. If you don't want to like kind of sit here and like chill, or, like have like a essentially read a book together. I get it. I, I do. But for those of you that do like it, then we'll keep doing it. But for those of you that don't, then whatever. Maybe uh, maybe we'll see you in the next one. It's all good. I don't care. If there's 5k, 10k, 30k, yeah, whatever. People like different shit. It's fine. Let's keep going. The market traders begin to set up their stalls, fighting and threatening each other to get the uh, spots closest to the ships. A few sly types, pickpockets, I already read this. Uh, I should buy breakfast. You wander the stalls looking for something to eat and find a stand selling bomba bread for two gold pieces. The smell is quite nourishing. I definitely need it. Ooh. All right. Okay. You buy a slice of the bread. It is pleasantly filling with a sweet, meaty texture. You thank the woman at the stall, then head over to the river to wait for the bridge to be lowered. After a while, a grizzled old man arrives and unlocks a small booth by the harbor bridge. He goes inside and closes the door behind him. Meaty bread? <laughs> Yeah, it means when you pull it open, you get the steam that comes out, and it's really chunky and, and like fleshy on the inside. I know what that. I know. I know what the, I know what they're talking about. All right, let's uh, let's. Should we go knock on the booth? I'm gonna wait. You sit down outside the booth to wait for the man to lower the harbor bridge. After a while, something happens. The old man leaves his booth and goes over to a contraption on the waterfront. He begins to heave and wind an ancient winch. It seems to be quite hard work. He's trying to move the whole weight of the bridge single-handedly. I go help. Let me excuse me. Let me let me help. 
That's the way that Hannibal Lecter would describe meat. <laughs> you get to your feet and go over to help the man out. Ah, oh, get out! You'll break it! Um, okay. Don't help him. You let the man struggle, happy to let him be stubborn. Sweat beads on his forehead, and he heaves and puffs as he works. But eventually the bridge clunks down into place. You salute the man cheerfully and get to your feet. All right. Cross the bridge. You cross the bridge over the Jajabi River, which runs like a slime trail through the center of the city. Oh, That's fucking gross. Andy Funny Voices? You said that wrong. Andy Funny Voices. No, 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 no. Excuse me. Let me I gotta correct you. That's Funny Voice Andy. Andy Funny Voices? You flipped it. You gotta get... Come on. You gotta get it right. Funny Voice Andy. Come on. <laughs> Andy Funny Voice... I love that. That's my favorite comment of the week. That's so... I love that wording. Time that person up for five seconds. Uh, you've reached the banks of Upper Kare. The buildings here are not as grand as on the south side of the river. They're in much better condition. Fewer people live on this side, away from the fields and the hills. But those that do are richer. They are also most likely more dangerous. But of course, it is on this side of the city that the north gate stands. You follow the road away from the river towards the fork in the road. Okay, we need to go down here. And I don't know if we can get there from here. I think it's impossible. Maybe it's not. If we go here and then down, maybe. Let's try it. Yep, the sun is rising over the streets of Apakara. A few creatures roam this way and that, unaware that they have walked these streets in just this fashion once before. In one corner, a spring bubbles with fresh water. Oh, I remember this. Drink it. You cup your hand to the water and drink a mouthful. It is fresh and invigorating. As though the water was enchanted. Okay, move on. We gotta go down. There we go. Alright, let's make our way down to the ruins. Where's the water coming from? That's, I don't ask that question. We don't ask that question. Got a lot of stamina now. You turn right, heading away from the city wall. A sign points towards Fireview Square. You pass large houses that have the aspect of official places of business. One is marked with the clawed fist of a money lender. An elven woman is just leaving. She looks quite worn out already, this early in the morning. You stop the woman with a gesture. She looks up at you in some surprise. Uh, you seem distraught. What's, what's this building? The woman looks at you in some surprise, as though she thinks your question must be a joke. It's a money lender. But why they call themselves that, I don't know. She gulps back a sob. They've turned you down? They're the worst kind of thieves. Hmm. What happened? Did they did you turn you down? She looks at you, her, her narrow eyes wide. Oh, stranger, you have no idea. I'll help you. What do you need? She pulls a face. You? Why would you do that? I cannot pay you. I'm sure you can guess. I'm an adventurer. I help people. Perhaps you can help me. I don't know. What should I say? Well, may wait, maybe you know some... I just love the information, right? Perhaps you can help me. I'm new to Kare. Is that so? Then maybe... Maybe you'll need a guide. I don't want a guide. I don't want a guide. I travel alone. I don't want a guide. It's a dangerous city full of traps. A friendly hand wouldn't do you harm, would it? No. No, no. I don't trust anybody. I don't trust a single person. Mm -mm. Nope. I, I don't want... Guys, I don't want to get, like, clubbed. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, yeah, come this way. Down this down this alley. And there's a guy I got fucking clubbed in the back of the head by some fucking thief. I don't want to do that. That's happened to us, like, at least once or twice so far. 
is like, oh yeah, yeah, oops, oh, I bumped into you and took like three of your items. All right, I'll leave it up to you guys. What do you think? Do we want a guide? Do we want someone to travel with us or no? So the poll will be one for yeah. Oops. Well, we're doing it. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. Very well. She smiles. The first true smile you've seen on her face. Very good, stranger. I'll be happy to help you if I can for a fee. Where do you want to go? Oh. Oh, shit. She actually might help. I need to find a beggar in the ruins. She nods. The Fallen Quarter. That's very easy to find if you can avoid the traps. She nods, clearly pleased. <laughs> Take me there or I'll kill you. What? Like, I pulled a, a sword out? Well, I'm not gonna threaten. No, I'm not gonna threaten. We can't be this, like, psycho that starts a con- This has happened- This has happened- I, my last playthrough, I remember this, is getting halfway through a conversation and then throwing a rock at someone. Like, oh yeah, oh, I I'm new in town. I'm the Annalander. What's your name? Oh, I'm the great sage of, uh, of the, of the Western ruins. Oh, interesting. Can you help me? Sword comes out, stick it at their, ne at their neck. Like, wh why even start the conversation if you're going to just threaten to kill somebody? Oh yeah, like I'm enjoying my time. We're having a good time around this campfire. I'm gonna craft a fireball and just lob it in the air above me and then run. Why? We we no. I'm gonna we're gonna do what we did. And how much do you charge? She sizes you up for a moment. Four gold pieces. Half now, half later. That's the way we do this. Half now, half later. I'll give you. Yeah, fine. Half now, half later, you suggest. The woman shrugs. That's fair. She holds out a palm and you give her two gold pieces. She smiles. Very well, then. She gestures down the street. Okay. What's your name? Before we begin, tell me your name. You can call me Mish. She nods. It's good to meet you, stranger. This way. She heads off along the street. I'm telling you, we're, we're going to get clubbed in the head. Uh, you feel the round, painful edge of a bowling pin strike the back of your skull. Um, this is, I'm going to get clubbed. The alley gets wider and passing a long building on the left which seems to be full of children. An orphanage, Mish tells you, full of ne'er-do-wellers. On the step, a lanky man sits with his eyes firmly closed. Wait, aren't, isn't this the... Um, isn't, isn't this the area where the people, they open their eyes... Should we, we, we should get, we gotta get the fuck out of here, right? Yeah, these, I think this is the, isn't this the group of people that have, like, the fire eyes? Yeah, we're getting out of here. Ignore. Yeah, yeah, we have, we got a place to be. We have a guide that's already walking. If we stop, we're gonna lose the guide. We're not stopping. We are not, we're not stopping for anything, by the way. You're back on the approach to Fireview Square. You see that? Mish says, pointing to the monument at the center of the square with a curious gleam in her eye. That's one of the great treasures of Kare. If you step inside, you're granted a vision of the whole city from above, so you can see where you need to go. Once again, you stand in the plaza of the Red Eyes, the heart of this half of the city port. In all directions, roads lead off, some no doubt to the houses of nobles and others directly into danger. On the other side of the square... The main road continues on through a low arch. A thousand other alleyways lead off in all directions into Upper Kare. Yeah, we're not sticking around here. Um, lead on. We're not doing this. Yeah, I'm gonna get teleported. <laughs> no, we're just going. Lead on. You gesture for your guy to lead the way. Through here, she says, waving towards the arch at the far side of the square. Right? Here it comes. Here comes the... I'm gonna...
Are you sure? You ask, surprised by the direction. The woman smiles. Of course I'm sure. Do you want to find the beggar or don't you? <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember. I don't remember. What is this? I forget what this is. What is this thing? What does this do to you? Follow. You follow your guide through the archway. You follow Mish between the narrow buildings until you reach a fork. To the left, the road continues towards... Oh, I thought it wanted me to stand in the middle and get... I don't know. Okay. Uh, while the right leads to the shorter street. In the center of the fork is a great bronze statue with some kind of pot at its feet. I remember this. Oh my. Look at how much gold there is. She steps towards the statue. No, 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 no. Don't do that. Don't, no, no. Lead on, lead on. Don't go over there. Don't go over there. This thing, I made a goblin go try to take money from it and it cut the goblin in half. No, 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 no. Don't lead on. Don't, do not. Let's go, you say, waving to Mish to start walking. Of course, she says. You can see she's looking at the base of the statue where a pot sits, containing several gold pieces. She begins to head down the road to the right. Uh, this way to the beggar. Is she gonna die? Was that a different statue? Oh, but this can't be good either. I uh, follow her. You follow her, but then at the last possible moment, she dives to one side and grabs an armful of gold from the bowl by the statue's foot. That'll teach those money lenders to not pay out, she cries, stuffing nearly 20 gold pieces into her pocket. Oh, God damn it! From somewhere behind her, there is a noise like thunder of something moving into life. Quick, <laughs> put the money back. Put it back. We were just kidding. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. It was a joke. Look for the noise. I gotta draw the sword. We can't run. Quickly, put the money back. She's an idiot. Leave her. Abandon her. No! This is a new party member. Run, run, run. Pray to the ape. I'm pulling the sword out. You draw your sword, expecting attack. But Mish only laughs. That won't be much good. She says, pointing behind her at the statue. The guardian of the gold, she shouts over the noise of hissing pistons and grating metal as the statue steps forward. Why do you think I led you here? With that, she sticks a single gold piece into your money pouch. The statue comes for the last person to thieve. Good luck. You'll need it. She races away but turns in the mouth of the alleyway to shout something. Here comes the club. Listen. It's got a weak spot on one of the legs, she calls back. And to find the beggar, you need to go to the wasteland, but beware of the mill! And she blows you a kiss <laughs> and rushes away. Well, we did get some info. Oh, am I always left? Uh, okay, you don't have time to be angry. Looking up, you see the statue's right arm sweeping down towards you. Leap left. You jump left, straight into the path of the club. We got clubbed. Actually got fucking clubbed. It just took, like, 12 minutes to happen. Which sends you flying backwards. Picking yourself up quickly, you see the bronze giant has leapt from its pedestal and is advancing towards you. You adjust the grip on your sword. You rush forward, dodging the statue's stamping foot. But when your blow lands on the metal, it only sends a painful shockwave up your arm and does no damage to the creature at all. The statue's leaning back for another swipe at you. You'll have to find this thing's weak spot, if it has one, or else you do not stand a chance. One of the legs. In the milliseconds available, you scour the creature for scratches, blemishes, as anything. That might suggest a chink in the armoring. Left leg, right? She said one of the legs. Left leg? Left leg. You race forward towards the creature's left leg and spy a small metal plate. 
Twisting your sword around in your hand, you drive it into the crack and begin to lever the panel open. The giant flails this way and that, trying to shake you loose, but you are determined. And finally, the plate flies open. A blast of hot gas ejects from the statue. It sways and then topples face down into the street. I'm alive. You gasp with relief and take a moment to recover your breath. You've survived, but your elven guide has disappeared. Will all the statues money? You see, we don't care about spelling, right? Who cares? It's with all the statues. Who gives? Who cares? I told you, it's 2022. Nobody gives a shit. I know what you were trying to say. I'll just re-say it. It's fine. I don't care. Who cares? All right, so we got to go down here. Back to the house. Oh, okay. So we got to go back to the house of Vlada and then chase the gnome, right? And then go down. Side street. Uh, could we get there from here too? We, no, we definitely have to go straight down. Uh-huh. You follow the short street towards the building with a sign that says the gambling halls of Vlada. Lots of creatures are going in and the place seems quite busy. There's a short queue to get in. Yeah, we have to go in and we have to chase the gnome out the back. You join the queue and after a few minutes you are you are allowed inside. Yeah, guys, I'm I'm not I'm not I don't want to go to the casino. I have to go through the casino. I gotta walk through the casino. And out the back door. So I mean, I may I could my maybe I'll set it up. Maybe I'll put up the twenty bucks in a machine or something, and that's fine. I'm just trying, but I'm not staying here. I'm just getting. I'm going through it. Okay, yeah. Okay, so here we go. I, I'm just walking through. Uh, give her my gold. All right, I'm just uh, I'm just gonna play for one game. Those of you that missed yesterday's stream, this is a casino. Uh, it is the casino in the game. So, we're, uh, I, we played yesterday and I did okay. But wait a minute, I gotta, hold on. Am I gonna lose my money? Alright, wait, 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 I gotta, okay, look at the tables. Picking up, uh, wait, 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 wait. No, I can't, because if because uh, the gnome, right? No, I don't want to do this. I'll play one game of the high wager. All right, we're gonna play the. We'll do one ten gold bet, and then we're out. Let's go. Where's the innkeeper? This is one. This is ten gold. Just one ten gold bet, no matter. Okay, so I got. Let's start with two, two threes. No, two. Uh, it's, I have literally everything. I have like a. We'll do one two. Two ones. Okay, three ones. That means he has to have to do four ones. Say it. Oh, you are in trouble. That means you that, call it. There's no way you have three ones. I win. See, we're just going to play. I'm going to just sweep this guy, and then we're going to get out of here. Okay. I got two... Let's say two threes, because that's what I have. No, two twos. Two... All right. You've got two... Roof two fours, three fours. No, no, he's, he's done. Call it. Thank you. You need 40 gold for that blacksmith sword. I'll be close. Remember, you're ruining this guy's family. I am not. It's... Look, we... That's not what's happening. What do you mean? Why does the four confuse you so much? Because on a regular... 
on a regular six-sided die, the five looks like this. It has that kind of same pattern. So my brain just keeps saying this is a five. Because it's got that same, you know, the in the middle, off the, you know what I'm saying? It's, it looks like a five. On a regular six-sided die. Okay. So you only he only has three dice. So I can really make this I can put this guy in a lot of trouble. I'm gonna say two ones. No, two twos. Let's really just ruin it. Two threes. Okay. I'm gonna say four. Let's do this. Because the chances of him having one of these are pretty high. Call it. You definitely have one. You have to have one. Yeah, you definitely have one. Whatever. Oh! Oh, really? One? I think there are two twos. Oh, well, that's interesting. I think there are three ones. Call it. <laughs> yeah, sorry. That's a, that's a horrible, horrible hand to have against you. You lose. Stupid. I'm just kidding. Damn, that's another good one. All right, so let's do two twos again. Two threes. Fine. Hmm. How many die? He has two die, which means he probably has one. So if I if I have to call this and it's wrong. Right? Okay. So that's assuming that he's saying that he has doubles, which no way. Alright, all right. that that was unlucky. One, three, two threes. Don't call it. Yep, I win. Alright, then we cash out and then we get out of here. Uh there is one one one. One two. I I think that there, there's two twos. Two is probably the only thing he has. Three twos. I'm sorry, buddy. But oh fuck! Wait a minute. I I I didn't I, I didn't know I had two twos. I thought I only had one. I thought I didn't know that was a two. I didn't. My brain just didn't make that a two. I thought I only had one two. I have to call it. Cause I mean. No, I I got caught here. I just have to hope he doesn't have it. I could just bluff it, but that's impossible because he he would have to call it anyways. I got to see if he's bluffing. No, he wasn't. I that was my fault. I actually didn't um realize I had that. All right, what do you got? One one. One. Three. <laughs> I, I pretty much am guaranteed to win this. Two, yeah, I'm guaranteed. There's not when you have one die versus two die, you it's almost impossible to win. There we go. All right. Ten chips. Change. Get out. I'm done. Cash it out. Cash out. Bang. 26. Okay, so wait, how do... How do I get to the ruins? Down here and up? Okay. I'm not... I'm not fucking with the statue again. So I have to go... How do I get over there?
Could I go up and then this way? Let's find out. Up and left, I think, yeah. Uh, leave the square. Yeah, there we go. Okay, cool. Let's go. In the alley. Do you like flour or corn tortillas? Well, that's a, a very loaded question because it depends on what's in them. Corn tortillas are good for uh, carne asada. I love like a carne asada and a corn tortilla and I fold it up nice and small. Pick it up, just... Uh, flour tortilla is great for burritos. Um, yeah, okay. You choose a random alleyway on the right-hand side of the square and slip into the shadow between the tall buildings. The houses either side are well-built and well-defended. There are iron railings on the windows, and some even have arrow slits and portcullises. One household has a dug a moat across its front door. Outside one building, a tall man stands with a grappling hook. Okay. You hang back and watch as he swings his grappling hook twice, aiming for one of the windows on the floor above. The hook misses and clatters to the street below, and the man curses before gathering up the rope for another try. Approach him. It's Batman? You stride over to the man as he swings his hook once more. Greetings! You begin with a respectful nod. The man turns to you. Stranger, I'm in a terrible fix. The man gathers the rope for another swing. He's clearly tiring. Uh, what's the problem? I've been locked out. This is my home, and I've lost my key. But I've got a terrible throw, as you can probably see. The man throws again and misses again. Um, where'd you get the grappling hook? Oh, would you believe it? I found it. Near an old well in the wasteland. I was wandering about there feeling sorry for myself, and I chanced across it. Bullshit. You a thief? Are you a guard? Answer the question. You reply coolly. Listen, if I were a thief... <clears throat> Do you not suppose I would be better at getting this accursed thing to land on the sill? To demonstrate his point, he swings again with considerable effort and once more misses, ducking to one side to avoid the look at he as it, the ducking to avoid the hook as it falls back. Uh, uh, the man gives up. He winds up the rope around his shoulder and then cups his hand to his mouth. Esme, will you just open the door and let me in? For a moment, nothing happens. Then a bucket of slop is thrown out over the man. He stands dripping in muck. Who is that? You ask from a safe distance away. Take my advice, stranger. Never marry an elven. They may have lovely eyes, but they are thoroughly untrustworthy. He stalks away up the alley, time for you to move. Well, we failed that, whatever that was. Okay, along the alley. Well, I don't know the guys out there with a grappling hook thrown it at random windows. What, am I going to trust this guy? Hey, yes, let me see that. I'll do it. And then I do, I go, poom, shoot the grappling hook out into the window, break the window, and the guards come and club me in the back of the fucking head. Is We've seen that song and dance too many times. The street is falling into disrepair around you. Something has blighted this region of the city. Even the trees and the gardens behind the mansions have turned black where they stand. The only greenery is the moss on the stone walls. There are no rats scurrying underfoot, and only spiders roost in the rooftops. You pass a particularly grand house, its doors locked with a heavy iron chain. Look at it. There is a metal S bolted beneath one gable. Perhaps it's an owner's mark. Perhaps it is there to stop the wall falling out onto the street. There's a ringing noise from down the alley. A hooded creature with a bell around his neck is approaching in shuffling steps. Oh boy. We could open we could open the door. Doc? Oh, no, I don't have any more. The 
is always jig. <laughs> but we don't know what this is. I could do sauce. Why is it lowercase and uppercase? There's the different spells. So capital D O P is open doors, but lowercase D O C, like lowercase D is um, a different spell. I don't know. It's it's a spell. Who knows? Uh, it's either jig or sus. Let's do sus or sap. Sauce is probably better. Because what if it's not a danger? Sense danger. You cast a spell and a calm voice enters your mind. It tells you that the house before you is empty of anything important, even of ghosts. But that the creature approaching is quite deadly. And the voice fades away. Um, you want to scurry into the house? I could do another one. You cast the spell, pulling out your little flute and playing a merry tune. The figure in the cloak stops suddenly, and then in awkward and painful steps begins to dance. The sight is macabre and cruel, and you hear the creature wheezing with the effort of every movement. Oh no, this is like bad. Uh, keep playing? It said that the, the creature was deadly. Does that mean that they were going to attack or they're just actually... I don't know. Keep playing? You show no mercy, continuing the spell until the creature is quite exhausted. It begins to scream in a human voice from its terrible injuries. When the enchantment finally fades, the creature can barely find the strength to crawl away. The creature with the bell around its neck passes you without looking up and shuffles away. Okay. But what, I, the, Sus said that the creature was dangerous. Open the door. Do it again. <laughs> it doesn't cost anything. You cast a spell, pulling out your little flute, and play a merry tune. The sound is cheery on the desolate street. Nothing more occurs. Now the creature's gone. Let's go to the house. The door to the house is locked with a heavy padlock chain. You can try to pry it open with the tip of your sword, but achieve nothing. Let's drop it open. Open locks and doors. You cast the spell over the heavy chain and it tumbles to the ground. Enter the house. You slip through the wide doors into the old empty house. An empty mansion. You push open the doors and step inside the dark house. It is a mansion on a grand scale. Larger even than the abandoned house you explored on the lower side of Kare. There are at least three floors and two great doors leading off to wings on either side of the entrance hall. From the back of the house comes a voice. The Lord is not home. <laughs> I know. That's why I'm here. <laughs> I know. The figure shambles forward, resolving itself out of the darkness into a tall ogre wearing the livery of a manservant. His eyes are tightly closed. Lord Shinva is not at home. Please leave. Lord Shinva is dead. Yeah, Sus said there wasn't anybody in here. Lord Shinva is dead. Isn't he? Indeed. He will not be returning for some time. Um, returning. Is he not dead? 
not so dead that he might not yet be revived. But I hold out very little hope. My service will continue regardless, of course. As he speaks, you notice a flash of metal from his neck. Some kind of collar made of a strange, dull, colored metal. And the collar is covered up by his shirt. I must now ask you to step outside, gesturing towards the door. Hmm. Push past. Should I just try to... What do I do? I don't know. What do I do about it? Push past? Push past the creature. You elbow past the creature, meaning to explore the house. In return, the creature opens his eyes, and a searing red flash burns your arm. I regret to inform you that I am part red-eye. Then he grabs you by the burnt arm and hauls you out of the house onto the street. The creature with the bell has gone. A narrow alley opens up to your left, slipping between the buildings. God damn it. That's bullshit. Rewind. Rewind. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Dude, just start killing everybody. No, I can't just kill everybody. Remember Korga? Korga hated us. Um, I'm gonna go down this way. Because we didn't explore this. Oh, I wonder. I wonder where the beggar would be. Down here, maybe? Who cares about Korga? I don't know. Um, I'm, I'll stay on the road. The buildings are thinning out. Through a gap between roofs, you can make out a tall, crooked steeple some way away. Like a finger pointing up towards the heavens. A dark shape sits at its very tip. As you watch, the shape seems to grow wide, then flatten once more, as though it had opened and closed. A bird, perhaps, or simply a flag, draping downwards in the still air. Hmm. Okay, we're looking for Theta. We need the spell line. Once again, you are emerging from the alley into a wide area of wasteland. Once this was a busy city district, but now it looks as though a hurricane has leveled it. Nothing stands higher than head height. A few staircases lead to nowhere, and in some places a door still stands. Plants grow from every crevice and crack as though someone had poured green paint over the whole scene. Things are constantly moving and shuffling between the leaves. The road, such as it is, is quickly smothered by piles of wreckage. There are lots of other ways to pick your way through. One possible route leads up and over the side of a broken down house. Another passes by what might have once been a mill. You would have to climb over the mill wheel to continue this way. We were told to avoid the mill. Right? Didn't somebody say, don't go near the mill? That was the guide, right? <clears throat> yeah, they said, that, they, they said to go to the mill. Did they lie? Yeah, while she was running away, she was like, Don't go to the mill! You're gonna get fucked up! Something like that. Look at the broken house. The house has been sliced like a many-layered cake, showing the floors that were once inside. Opened rooms have been stripped of their color by the wind and light, and of their possessions by a decade or more of scavengers. But there are still hints that this place was once a family home. The hooks in the ceiling above the hearth, the marks notched on a ground floor pillar, that suggests the height of a growing child. Children. Height of growing children. I'm going to climb the house. Look at the mill. Who would build a mill out here so far from the river? Still, there is a gigantic mill wheel lying on its side in the path. Despite the state that the building next to it is in, the wheel itself seems perfectly intact and has not even lost its perfect circular shape. Um, we were specifically told to avoid the mill. So, um... Oh, it's, it's a portal trap! That's right! 
That's right. A perfect circle on the ground. Climb the broken house. You clamber up the fallen rubble to the roof of the broken building. From here, you get a clear view across the rest of the wasteland. It stretches for a mile or two and will take about an hour to cross on foot. And at its far side, a tall iron fence thick with ivy slices across the land. Perhaps to keep the people of the wasteland out or to keep whatever is beyond the fence in. In the distance, you see dark shapes moving across the sky. Climb down the other side of the house. You make your way down the far side of the building and look back onto the path, which soon forks. I, this is actually really important because I don't know where this, with, where this person is. Lord Theta is in the ruins. Lord Theta can be found blind and begging in the ruins of the fallen quarter of the city. He's a beggar. I don't know. Just said he's in the ruins. Does anybody... Nobody told us where. He could be anywhere. Let's try right. Okay, you follow the path to the right between broken foundations and cracked streets. On one side, a roof sticks half out of a sand dune. On the other, a front door lies flat on the ground as though leading to a hidden cellar. Then the path comes to a building that amidst all this destruction is still standing. Its door is closed and its stone walls seem completely intact. You try the door and find that it falls open at the slightest touch. We're going to the house. You might be in the house. The house consists of a single room with a large table and a large chair. And in the far corner, a sealed box. Everything seems in good repair. The wood looks waxed and polished and the hinges on the box are free of rust. Is it a mimic chest? I don't know. From the doorway, you stop and look around and that's when you notice the foot sticking out from under the table. <laughs> uh, look at the foot. You go over to look at the foot. It is clawed and a dull shade of gray-green. It is about the size of your head and sticks out from under the low table. This house feels dead. Even the air inside seems not to move. Did I just kick the foot? All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prod the foot. Reaching forward with the walking cane you found in the house. <laughs> the one... Opportunity to use the cane is here. I take the cane out and go poke, poke. That's the only thing the cane has been used for. <laughs> nothing happens. All right, poke it again. Feeling more confident now, you prod it once more. Still nothing. Seems like this creature is either very asleep or very dead. Okay. Go for the box. No longer concerned about the creature, you head over to the box and lift the lid. Inside are a series of small round stones, carefully carved. Lift out a stone. You pick out one of the stones at random and lift it from the box. It isn't heavy, but it is exquisitely smooth. Not quite round with a dimple at the top and a deeper pit near the top. In fact, you realize as you turn it over in your hand, it is carved in the shape of an apple. Looking in the box, you see other carved foodstuffs. Apples, bread rolls, goat's cheese, a ham. Each has been almost perfectly chiseled into a shape. This is the kid at the fair. You search through the box, hoping to find something of value. Or else something to explain the purpose of the collection. But you discover nothing more. Turning away, your eyes fall on the other side of the table, where the head of the creature lies. The face is clearly stone. The eyes are stone. The open mouth is stone. It is a statue of a Sven, or else it once was a Sven. In its hand, you see it holds a stone shovel. You peer at the shovel. It is a wide blade, good for heavy digging. 
This creature was a gardener, perhaps or a farmer, or more likely given his lonely outpost near the necropolis, the city gravedigger. But now he is solid stone. Such things are not impossible. Perhaps he buried a wizard's lover. A day too soon, perhaps. You step back outside into the dying sunlight. Huh. Interesting. I wonder what you could do there. You make your way between blasted walls and weed-encrusted rubble. There is a constant movement in the corner of your eyes. Rats scurrying to hide under the stones and the cracks. The path turns around a large stone fountain, which has toppled over on one side, revealing an empty well leading down into the earth. We don't, I don't want to go in the sewer. Move on. I'm not going in the sewer. All right, the edge of the wasteland. Did we miss it? Oh, hold on. After a while, another path joins this one. Looking back along it, you see a toppled steeple. A track climbs the rise at your back towards a low hovel. This is the far end of the wasteland. Ahead, you make out a line of tall, dark trees. Okay. I'm going to say the hovel. So, hey, do all your jokes come from this game? I would say, like, maybe 10 percent of all the jokes I've ever made. Maybe maybe like seven, maybe seven percent of everything I've ever said has been uh, directly from the text of this game. No, maybe like four percent of everything I've ever said. <laughs> Such as, I don't know, I made it up. I'm just, I don't know. It's not even true. All right, you climb the rise towards the hovel. It is merely a tent pitched in a clearing, guy ropes held down by rubble. You stand and hold your breath, but you hear nothing from inside. Perhaps it is unoccupied. Certainly it can't contain much. It's going. Aha! Did we find him? You step into the shade of the tiny hovel and your eyes widen. The room inside is lined, floor to ceiling with trinkets, knickknacks, bric-a-brac, and other miscellaneous stuff. Some is piled up on the shelves, some hang from the ceiling, even more lean against the walls. There are weapons, pottery, jewelry, domestic objects, magical items, and so on. Oh, it's not the right person. Who is this? Sitting cross-legged on the floor in the midst of all this mess is a small bearded gnome who rubs his hands and greets you as you come in. I've come to rob you. You know what? Fuck him. Right? Fuck him. You know what I'm saying? Should I? I've come to rob you. I've come to rob you, you announce. Amazed that no one has done it already, since he lives out here clearly undefended. Very well. As you can see, I can't stop you. But you wouldn't rather trade? I'll trade your life for what you own. <laughs> trade would be acceptable. <laughs> Imagine, like, hey, this is a stick-up. This is a robbery. Oh, but I mean, we could trade, too. Yeah, yeah, you know, that's works. I, I'm more into that. You're right. Yeah, that's acceptable to me. Taking mercy on the tiny, scrawny creature. Oh, good. I'm very glad to hear that, as you might imagine. He pats the ground beside him. Let's see if we can do a little bartering. As you can probably tell, I have no interest in money. The gnome gestures around his little room. There's clearly a lot to choose from. But the items which stand out are a pot of beeswax, a bag of goblin's teeth, and a compass whose needle quivers in a direction which is close to, but not actually, north. What would you like? The gnome asked. I don't want any more teeth. What's the compass? It's not a normal compass. Instead, it'll point you to where it thinks you need to go. I'm afraid it has a mind of its own, and it isn't always correct. And it probably won't work in the countryside outside of Kare either. So I'd understand if you don't want it. Um. 
Well, we're but we're like on our way out of Kari. That's Jack Sparrow's compass. <laughs> It's not, I, that's not going to do anything. I, honestly, that's not going to work. I don't need any more teeth. I could use the beeswax. He said it's not going to work outside Kare. We, we, we're at the end of our Kare journey very soon here. Teeth or we riot. You could be lying. All right, I'll take the compass. Sounds intriguing, you reply, not putting the compass down. A anything else? Um, do I have beeswax? Oh, no, okay, I have beeswax. Yeah, guys, I have eight goblin teeth. I don't need any more. Um, no, that's enough. You say, standing back. All done? Very good. You took one of mine, so I've taken one thing of yours. I'm very quick. You probably didn't notice me doing it. Good day. The gnome gestures towards the door for you to leave. Wait, what did he take? What did you take? The gnome looks surprised. Well, really, I have no idea. I'm a kleptomaniac. That <laughs> should be fairly obvious. And what's more, I couldn't see into your pack when I was taking it, could I? But I'm very fair, and I took exactly the right amount of things, so we're all square. What did he take? What did he take? Am I missing something? Skull cap, wig, bone, sun jewel. Badge of the noble, 26 gold. Tinderbox, walking cane. What did I, what did he take? He took the chain. He took the silver chain. He took the flute? No, he took the chain. He took my silver chain. A magical silver chain that acts like a snake for a fucking dumbass broken compass? I'm attacking this guy. Give me my stuff. I'm sorry, that's really quite impossible. I don't know where I put it or what it is. You should be pleased with what you stole from me and be on your way. Oh, that's why he's got all this shit, because he, he doesn't even know what it is. <laughs> Take something else. I just start grabbing stuff. No, 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 no. That's not. I, I actually probably should get out of here. Because if I take something, if I just start grabbing shit, he's going to grab stuff from me and be like, well, you took something of mine, so I took something of yours. I wonder if I. Should I just attack him? Threaten him. Give me my things or I'll squeeze you to death. For a moment, you seem to see something move in the corner of your eye. Look here. I can't help it. And in all this talking about it, I've gone and stolen something else from you. So really, I do advise you to just leave. Kill this mother. Kill him. You give in to your worst intentions and strangle the gnome where he stands. But with him dead, you'll never find your property. You do search of the... You do a search of the hut, but nothing turns up while all the time outside the sun is setting. Eventually, you give and you head out of the hovel. You return back along the path. What the fuck? Hold on. What else did... I just strangled him to death? What did he take? <laughs> oh, he took the wig. No, I need that. I genuinely need that wig. I need it. I genuinely need that. That's the thing that lets me talk to animals. Do, are you not going to let me rewind that? <laughs> well, and by the way, why did I put my hands around his neck? I strangled him to death? 
Why wouldn't I just kill him with my sword? Why would I choke him to death? I put my bare hands around his neck and squeeze him to... Wait, did I say that? I did say that, didn't I? <laughs> Give me my things or I'll squeeze you to death. Why was I in the mood to strangle someone? I have swords and magical spells and why would I... I don't need to strangle someone. There's no reason for this. I have magic... I have lightning bolts and... All right, run, run a poll. Can I rewind and just fuck this place and literally just not even go in here? It's got to be at least 75% yes. Can I rewind? Or do we lose two items for no reason? Do I have to live with my decision? It's got to be at least 75%. That's what you get. It's a free rewind. I know re rewinding is, I know, it's, a, it's polarizing. I know, right? Do you live with your decisions and just take it as the game goes? Or do you, no, 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 my finger was still there, so I can still do it. I think there's an equal amount of both that make the game fun, right? Because there's been a lot of cases where I have not rewound. It's like, no, we got to fucking live with that. It's, it is fun, though, to play this game. Uh, and you have to live with every decision. Although it's really hard to win, I will say. It's very difficult to win the game without doing it. Alright, let's go back. Uh, we're just... Should I do what I did to get the compass and he takes the chain? Right? Oh, wait, wait, it might be random though. Maybe I just don't even do this. We're just, I'm going to leave. I'm not even going in here. Don't even bother. Okay. Uh, we're going to the steeple. Chat's a bunch of rewind Andes. Hey, by the way, we got him. This is definitely him. You make your way through the wasteland towards a church. Most of the building is in ruins, but a tall steeple still reaches for the sky. Circling the steeple are two dark shapes that look like enormous birds. At the foot of the church, a man dressed in rags is curled up asleep. Look at him. You stop and peer down to look at him. Could this be Theta, the blind beggar that you were told to find? His face is curiously familiar. You've definitely seen it somewhere before since you arrived in Kare, although you have not seen any other beggars as filthy and smelly as this one. Is this the guy from the very beginning? We could have killed this person from the, in the beginning. Thomas, yeah. Well, I think we could have actually killed this guy. Uh, let's wake him. You reach down and wake him gently. At first he doesn't respond and you wonder if you are too late. But then he sits up sharply. Who's there? I, I'm under attack! I'm under attack! He rubs his eyes, then reaches out with a dirty fingertip to your face. Um, all right, let's take, let's take it, let's take it slow. One voice, Andy. No, sorry, it's Andy one voice. Get it right, or don't even say it. Um, wait, 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 okay, well, should I give him something? Introduce myself. Greetings, you say. The beggar groans and grumbles. What did you wake me for? I can see in my dreams, you know. I maybe that joke from the first game, for the first time you played. I'd rather stay there. You are Theta, noble of Kari. Do I jump this on him immediately? You are Theta, noble of Kare. You round on the beggar. You are Theta, 7th Noble of Kare, are you not? The man looks absolutely terrified by the accusation. He begins to curl up around himself and scream. It seems quite a strong reaction. Then you see he is not looking at you, but past you. Oh shit, look up. You turn your attention skywards to see the two dark shapes are hurtling downwards, beating wide, leathery wings. They are the creatures you saw flying around the steeple. 
God cursed harpies! They come for me every time. Every coin I get, every apple, every stinking crust of bread. They come and they take it from me. What did I do to deserve such torment? Step in front of the beggar. You push the beggar back and stare up into the sky. Some terrifying looking. The harpies are screaming down towards him. Ugly, dark-skinned creatures with sharp talons and their arms and legs coming to tear out what's left of his. Let's go. Okay, this is important. I don't have a pebble. Shield. Can I do cats? <laughs> what would cats do? I could do giant. Giant would help. Gob. We got. I got plenty of goblin teeth. I got eight of these. Let's get a goblin, friend. You toss a goblin's tooth into the ground and cast a spell. A plume of smoke forms, and then, moment later, a goblin warrior stands in front of you. The beggar begins to shriek and scrabble back through the dust. No, to what? Why would I do? Turn the goblin on the harpies. You turn the goblin about to attack the harpies. The short creature jumps up and down, trying to stab the flying monsters, but they cackle and laugh before one finally snatches your little warrior into the air. They lift him high, well above the ruined steeple, then let go. Thankfully, the enchantment that has created him breaks before his body hits the ground, and he simply vanishes in mid-air. <laughs> this is so fucking useless. You know what? G Gob is really good to test stuff, right? You go first. Sending a goblin into a room and they just get like instantly killed by a trap and then you just walk around it. That's, we've, we've done that a few times. Uh, there's such dog shit though. This is so bad at everything else. Alright, they come screaming for your neck. Uh, they only got five stamina though, so I'm gonna go full blast here. Got it. Flexes its long talons as it turns in the air once more. It's still fighting. All right. I got to pull back, I think. You think he'll go more than five? Yeah, he will. Oh, come, what the fuck was that? 0 0.1? Look out! They never give up, these harpies. They never give up. Full blast. Oh, that's fucking da That's awful. That's truly bad. I might have to do it. I'm going to do it again. That's actually terrible. The beggar holds onto his hat as his head, and the creature swoops low. Fuck. I'm dead. Oh my god, this stupid thing! It's over. Still defending. I oh, I can't hit it! Okay. We're gonna do 5.0. Fuck you. We're going full blast. 6.5. One damage. This is so stupid because they're in the air. I should have just thrown a goddamn grenade in the air. Definitely coming in hard. Yeah. Okay, now I'm gonna do light because this, you don't have enough stamina to do anything. We're gonna do two point. We're gonna do three point oh. You got to be fucking kidding me, huh? It's gonna okay. It's gonna defend. It circles out of reach. Defend again. It flies up to the roof of the old building. Okay, defend again. 
It wheels high into the air, screaming to the other. What? What the fuck? I thought he was high in the air. I didn't know he was down. What? It said he was goes high into the air. <sighs> Harpy's eyes are on fire. Yeah, come in. 6.5. That's a huge, that's a huge hit. Huge, huge hit. It's going to go for another strike. Fine, do it. 2.8. I swear to God, man. All right, fuck you. We got one. What's happening? Demands the beggar, but you order him to silence as an opening appears. You cut a side blow. The harpy hits the ground. It is a huge creature. As big as a bear, but the savage light in its eyes has gone dark. The beggar darts forward to jab it with his stick. But there's no time for celebration. The second creature is already searing down from the sky. Oh, God damn it. This is such a... This, the ape... Thank God for the ape. This one has a much bigger stamina pull. I gotta defend. Yep. That was a good play. Don't let him get you. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Okay, you just used a whole bar. I'm gonna go like... The creature hovers just a little out of reach. This is a defense scenario, right? Or just a little bit. Like 1.2.0? Yep. Okay, it wheels up and turns about ready to strike. Look out, he's going for your head. Eight. Got him. Okay, now we pull back. Because he's coming in with like probably like a five or a six. I could have done it, but it's alright. I got a bigger stamina pull now. It hangs in the air, short way back. Claws grasping. What do you... Uh, what do you think? All in? 5.7. Got it? Two. Come on! It's gonna drop down. Defend. I, that was the right play. Alright, now we go all in. I get the kill right here. Got it. Thank God. That was a lot. Suddenly you reach out. You cleave the air with your blade with a final turn through the air. The harpy barrels over, then tumbles, striking the side of the church. As it hits the ground, a wall collapses, and the creature is buried beneath a slide of masonry. The beggar cheers and begins to dance. All right, well, I'm glad we got a goblin, like, just, like, snatched up and dropped. The beggar creeps out from his hiding place and thanks you two or three times over. Give him back his badge. Wait, what? This is his badge. The one that we got from the... I don't know where we got this, but this is his badge. I... I okay. I forgot we had this. You got it in that hidden room from the mansion. Oh, yeah. It was, it was his house, right? All right, here. Take your badge. Here. I have something of yours. You dig into your pack while Theta waits, cocking his head and listening to the sound of you rummaging through your things. Finally, you produce the badge and place it into his hand. He smiles as he accepts it. Why, stranger, thank you, but... He feels over the surface trying to work out the shape, then suddenly he drops it, as though it were scolding hot. That's not mine. Not anymore. I wish I'd never taken it in the first place. I won't take it again. He kicks at the badge and skitters away into the debris of the fallen church. Talk to him. Lord Theta, I'd like to talk to you. That is my name. I don't deny it. I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you happily. Ever since the blindness struck me down, I've been tormented by those demons. And now they're dead. You have saved me. Or as much as I can be saved. This is Cain! Dude, we are ready for this conversation, by the way. This is the most prepared I think I've ever been for this conversation. 
Give him his walking cane. Here, I have something for you. You take his outstretched hand and place the walking cane into his grip. His fingers find its familiar shape and he leans quickly onto it with a sigh. My old friend, this saw me through the worst times when my eyes were failing. I hardly need it now, of course. To demonstrate, he spins around on the spot, gets his legs into a tangle, and sits down sharply laughing. <laughs> but thank you, stranger. You are indeed kind. <laughs> the beggar shivers against a sudden breath of cold. The afternoon is waning. The evening is approaching already. Days are growing shorter. It's like that here near the backlands. Tell me your spell line for the gate. Just cut right to the chase. That was a Willy Wonka moment. <laughs> Tell me your spell line for the gate. Please. Happily. I'm glad to be rid of it. It was... Uh... No, my memory is not as good as it was. Let me see. It was... Uh... I'm... He racks his brain thinking for all he is worth. <laughs> Shit. Um, <laughs> hit him. <laughs> no, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait. Wait, wait. Got it. By Korg's grace and something's pride. Oh, but I can't remember what the something was. <laughs> I'm starving. I'm so hungry. But you have no food you could offer him. Oh, come on, dude. Try to remember the rest of the line. He shakes his head. It's gone, I fear. It's gone, like my sight. It was the name of a god. One of the old gods. The god of pride, no less. And maybe you can find out elsewhere. You could ask Korga, the god of grace, for his help. He lives in a temple that way. He waves roughly northwards. Shit. Korg is not going to be happy that you killed the gnome. Wait, uh, did, does that still count? That doesn't still count, right? D I, have I killed anybody? No, be, let's be honest. I strangled a gnome. I did. I strangled a gnome with my bare hands and, and, and cut off his windpipe until he died. But we rewound that. Have I killed anybody in this playthrough here? I killed the council guards. Fuck. No! But was that in defense? No, that was Flanker went in and I went in too. No, I need to feed... I have to feed him. I need to defeat him. Where can I get food? Do I have that part of the line already? That's a good question. I don't. I don't have it. We'll, hold on, we'll see at the end of this conversation. Tell me the order of the lines. The order of the spell lines. Do you know it? No, no idea. Although I know my line came first. Okay. Tell me about Korga. Korga sees all and knows all. Suddenly the beggar grips your wrist and squeezes. But you risk your life if you talk to him. Remember, please, the left eye. That's how you start the left eye. What happened to your eyes? You take a moment to show some sympathy. What happened to your eyes? A black eye curse, and I know who cursed me. It was Sansus. Once he was a good ruler, fair and honest. He ruled Kare like a kind father looking after a cherished daughter. Nothing was too much effort. But he began to fear his other counselors. He thought we were plotting against him, ready to overthrow him. Were you? <laughs> Mulas was. As soon as Sansas gave Mulas one of the spell lines, he wanted them all. He wanted them for himself. So he could hold the city to ransom. Mulas used to be a blackmailer. But I was loyal. And Sansa's repaid me. 
like this. He was weeping. You curse the beggar for his useless half-help. Then you look to the track ahead and take your leave of him. Your clues have been updated. God damn it. I just needed to have food! Where can I get food? I need to buy food! Where can I get food? I need to rewind to get food. Korg is not going to help me. I killed somebody in this re rewind. God damn it. Check the sewer. Check your notes on the spell order. Where is it? Korga's Grace? Wait, I know it. I know it, I know it, I know it, I already know it. Korga's Grace. No, you don't? He gave you that part. What did he do? What did he not give me? By Korga's grace and someone's pride. Shit. Whose pride? Whose pride? The god of pride is who? We need to find out who the god of pride is. Shit. Oh no. Is it, can we get it here? Korg, no, Korg is not the god of pride. Korg is the god of grace. You need to get it from Korga. Could I ask someone, ask the dead noble in the crypt? Uh, let's try that. Let's try that. Over here, right? Okay. Defense. Is it slang? Shitfuck doesn't know. Damn it. We're so close. I need literally one word to complete it. I've, I've never completed this. The path ends at a tall and ancient iron fence overgrown with weeds. Through the dense leaves, you can make out a wide area. Dotted with stones and small buildings and straight, somber trees. It's an acropolis of mausoleums and tombs. Slang's the god of malice. <laughs> Maybe check the tombstones. Yeah, that's right. There are nobles buried here. All right, I'm going to... Uh, let's cast a spell. Wait, I, I look at my health. Try the sewers. Yeah, what is big? Big is one stamina. Is anything free? Zip. It's not free. What parts do you have? I have everything... Besides the name of the god of pride. That's the only thing I don't know. Uh, hopefully this doesn't kill me. I'm going to climb it. You test the ivy. It seems tightly wound about the railings. Wedging one toe between the metal bars, you grip the cords of the plant and haul your way up. Then the second foot is up and you are climbing. So you can feel the plant tearing under your hands. Keep going. Ow. You keep going, hoping that if you move quickly, you will clear the fence before the ivy comes away. You don't manage it. Near the very top, you feel the sap leaking between your fingers as the cords of the plant snap. Then you fall painfully back onto the rubble-strewn ground. However, all is not lost. Where the plant is torn away from the fence, a foxhole has been revealed, leading underneath the fence. Something... A rat, perhaps, scurries through the fence and back into the wasteland. 
All right, we're going in the hole. You kneel down and wriggle your way into the foxhole. It is so narrow that you have to keep your arms out in front of you and drag your pack along behind. But thankfully, it is short, coming up on the other side of the fence, less than two strides away. You pull yourself up from a hole in the ground into the graveyard. All right. Where's the ape? I need food. I need to heal. Do I, I have... Do I have nothing? Fuck! Try Korga again. Last time they answered you still, they just didn't bless you. I remember him standing up and saying, um, I'm going to destroy you. How dare you take a life of somebody? I'm going to kill you. How dare you? Okay, you're once again standing in the city necropolis in the shadow of the yews and gravestones. Okay, the sun is setting behind the wall. Look around the gravestones. Is there anything we didn't get here? You step nervously off the path and walk between the nearest tombs. Some are ancient headstones tilted to crazy angles. Others are fresh, neatly carved. Okay, we were here. We were, we were here. Is anything here? Wait, grave goods? Shit. All right, oldest grave. Lorag. All right. No, we Lorag. Lorag doesn't know. We already talked to Lorag. Don't argue with Korga. Look elsewhere. We just need the god's name. You were rude to him last time. Somebody said there are two ways to get the final part of the spell line. The second way is a bit. Eccentric. <laughs> I love how you put that. That's great. It's a little eccentric. <laughs> go to Korga. You don't need the Korga's blessing. All right, we'll go to Korga. Let's go to Korga. Okay, you return to the path beside the is is the well. All right. Wait. Is it is there food in here? Pull up the bucket. Yes! Drink it! Thank God. Thank God. I'm so happy. Because it... On, like, you can rewind, right? But if you have 1 HP, 1 HP, 1 HP through it, all of your rewinds, you're kind of just screwed. Alright, we're going we're gonna to go talk to Korga again. We'll see if he says anything different. Okay, here we go. Up to Korga. You will not get the line from Korga. You need to go into the sewer. Should I go in to the sewer? Is that the way? It's all right. All right. Can I, I'm going. Is it going in the sewer? All right, we're going in. We're going in. We're going in. We're going in. Sewer's the way to do it. We're going in. There probably is another way, but look down. Yeah, the wells lead to the sewer. I hope you're not lying to me. Throw a coin in. Can I not climb in this? Wait, this is the. Is this not it? Throw a coin in. Stop throwing coins in. How many coins is I have to throw in here? How many coins do I have to throw? This is what's happening. Back it up, back it up. I thought I could go in this one. I can't go in this one. I can't go in this one. I can't go in this one. <laughs> Drink from the bucket and let's move on. Okay. Korga. Oh, God. You walk for half an hour through thick trees along a narrowing track until you reach a fork in the road. 
To the left, the track gets narrower. To the right, a massive shadow looms. Yep, okay, so this we've been through here before. We're gonna make a move. So wait, wouldn't stepping in the circle in Korg's thing is a teleport trap, and it puts me into the sewer, doesn't it? Yep, that's what we're doing. Uh, okay, let's make a move. No, 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 no. What? Okay, look for an opening. Uh... Oh yeah, we pay we pay the gargoyle, right? Drop in a gold piece and look into the eyes and we get health. Yep. Very good. Climb up. Uh we're gonna do cast a spell. We're gonna probably gonna do big. Because or should we do float? Big works, float works. They're all, they're, all, they're all one stamina. Yep, we scale it, scale it, scale it halfway up. Here we are. Look at the view. It's beautiful up here. Walk around to the north face. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Watch the torches. They're going crazy. Climb higher. Okay, here we go. I'm just literally going to walk in. I'm going to give the double middle finger to Korga. I'm going to say, hey, fucking suck my ass. And then I'm going to fucking leave. I'm going to walk him directly into the trap. I'm going to make him so angry. I'm going to be like, hey, fuck you. You're a piece of shit, piece of shit, piece of shit, piece of shit, piece of shit. And then step right in the circle. <laughs> He's going to be like, oh, why did I turn that on? I should have kept it off. Yeah, are you going to follow me? I could learn another spell too, right? Should I go learn another spell? That would work, wouldn't it? I get another chance to learn a second one. Yeah, why not? Let's do that before I um, before I get out of here. Uh, let's create a new spell. For people that didn't see yesterday's stream, I'm sorry, I'm kind of blowing through this, but uh, we did already do all of this very slowly and very methodically, so... Um, if you haven't caught up yet, I suggest you do. Look to the stars. You're a mage and not a mere sorcerer who knows what spell you could weave at a spot like this. It's the best place in the city. Let's try to make a new spell. We did purr last time, which is summon a thousand cats. Attack is really good. Tar. Uh, puke. Puke exists. Luck. I imagine luck is probably a good one too. Black is really good. I think we can just create whatever. Do tack. Tack. What's lure? Luck. Lure. Tack is the best. You should do tack. Please tack. All right, let's do tack. You fashion the stars into alignment and an enchantment is created. You feel a tingling sensation in your wrist and you look down to see flashing sparks in your palm that flicker different colors. For a moment, gold, then white, then black. Um, close my fist. You flex your fingers, ready to grip the sparks, which begin to flash faster and faster. Perhaps the shade of the spark is important. Will you grab a certain color or trust to chance? I don't know. Gold? Just grab gold, black? Is gold going to give me money? Just grab Giga Chad. Um, I need to pull because I, I genuinely don't know which one of these I'm going to do. Uh, one, two, or three.
I could not make a decision if I wanted to. Yeah, one, one is uh, wait for the black spark, two is wait for the gold spark, three is just grab whatever. <laughs> it looks like it's going to be just grab. So you want me just to, to close my eyes and just giga chad, just who cares? Okay. Why would you guys do this? I This is not my decision, so... If I explode when I do this, then it's not my fault. Alright. Just grab. You have no way of knowing the spell, how the spell will last, so you waste no time. You close your fist tight. The sparks are hot in your palm, but the pain fades quickly. And when you reopen your fist, you found that you are now holding a wooden face mask of black wood. The sparks and the spell itself are gone. You found one of the secret spells of the Temple of Korga. The icy wind chills you to the bone. That is a new spell that I can do. That's fear, right? Where is it? It's Gak, isn't it? Fog, mud, niftel, Gak. Terrible fear within another's mind. Brave creatures will suffer a cold sweat, while cowardly ones will be reduced to cowering jelly. It's Gak. Cool. I love Yob. I'm so glad we have so many opportunities to use it. Go use it on the gnome. All right, it's time. Then head back down and just go right in. Should I just try to steal something? What is tack though? What does that do? Is tack on there now? Uh, no, it's not because it's not known. It's an unknown. It's not in my spell book. It generates one of five magical items. That's awesome. Okay, here we are. Seems that this is the Ziggurat of Korga the Gracious. Go inside. Oh, shit. I forgot about the snake. I forgot about the snake. No, you dick. Oh, my God. Rewind. I forgot about the snake. Get out of here. Minus four, minus four, minus four. Full blast again. Kill him. Kill him. Kill him. We cheat. We cheat. We cheat. We cheat. All right. Korga. You're a little bit of a dick. There's Korga uh, up there. Steal something. Yeah, fuck this place. The temple is cluttered with so many valuable artifacts. It is hard to decide where to begin. There are sculptures, plates, candlesticks, and shields of solid gold. A table covered with a silk cloth holds a crystal decanter and four golden goblets. In another corner, a fountain showers with an endless stream of diamonds and jewels. Take a handful of fucking jewels. You go over to the fountain, gazing in wonderment at the sparkling splendor that issues from its spout. You can simply put your pack underneath the stream, open, and make enough money to hire an army to take with you to Mampang. You take a fistful of the jewels, but then you freeze. The humming sound in the temple has become louder, and you have a strong sense that something is watching you. Turn around and look. You turn your gaze up and see nothing, but wait a moment. Weren't there four stone demons up in the rafters above the altar before? The gargoyles are flapping in the air above you, 
they are still stone, but now their jaws are working and their teeth snap in the air in front of their faces. You begin to ready a spell, but the creatures know a sorcerer when they see one. In moments, one has dived for your right arm and with a single bite, severs it clean away. What? You look down in horror. You will not be able to cast any more spells now or wield your sword well. The gargoyles, however, back a little, perhaps hoping that the punishment has been suitably severe. I can never cast a spell ever again. <laughs> that sucks. Um... We, we ain't living with that. I know, I'm just I'm a cheating Andy so bad right now. Whatever. Whatever, whatever. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Whatever. It's fine. What else can I do here? Should I just zap the statue? Should I just cast lightning and put it directly into Korg's head? It's three stamina, though. That's bad. <laughs> Do hot and just burn this place down. Um... Doesn't matter. I mean, I, I'm trying to just get to the sewer. Because the, the sewer is where we can apparently figure out this last word, maybe. All right, I'm just walking across. Let's go. Nonsense and superstition, you stride across the carpet towards the idol, but along the way, something happens. Although you cannot be sure of what. One moment you are in the Temple of Korga, and the next, you are in the sewer. This is where we want to be. So let's find this goddamn line. You've landed in a disgusting pile of unbelievable filth. Slime, excrement, sludge, dung, and dregs. All the way up to your neck. You are evidently in the sewers of Kare. Wait. You wait a moment, as a nearby chute ejects a torrent of filth and pig swill. Then you get yourself to your feet and wipe off the sludge as best you can. Oh, we just got Elden Ringed, by the way. Where am I? You stand in a cavernous sewer tunnel, filled knee-deep with slow-flowing, stench-filled water. It is pitch black. You could be standing on a mountaintop or inside of a coffin. Except that is, for a single speck of light, somewhere in the far distance. Wait. You wait, and within a few moments, the tunnel is filled with goblins. There are not one or two, but a whole army, led by a tall, stocky elder goblin, and chanting a weird, guttural song. They pause a short distance away from you, and the leader steps forward. You should not be here. This is the domain of the Mad King. And of us. Well, fuck you. Yak. Or. God. Damn it. I could be the new god. Uh, hot. That's too much stamina, though. I need to do. I need to do things that are not stamina. Gak would work. Pop would work. I don't have any pebbles, though. Uh, Dud would work, but that stamina. I think Gak is good. Let's try it. It doesn't cost any stamina. Gak. You cast the spell, whipping out the black face mask. The goblins shake and quiver with fear. <laughs> you are clearly a powerful being. We will not trouble you. And with that, he waves his army on. They march off into the tunnel. 
jeer at them. You call and jeer at the goblins as they pass, but they are well trained. Even the grunts at the back ignore you. At the rear are two goblin generals. How many more soldiers does the Mad King want? Thousands. They'll get what he gets. That he will. The two walk on, still talking in muttering voices, like this one. I didn't see that there were no quotes. The goblins are tramping away up the sewer. All right, head the other way. Or follow the goblins. I mean, where does this go? This goes down here, potentially up. This goes up and potentially over here. I'm going to follow them with the face mask on and just be like... <laughs> this guy's still following us, this fucking weirdo. Jim Carrey from... Yeah, I'm going to be running around. That's exactly what I was thinking of. Do you know what I was... Th holy shit. That person? You... that I didn't even say it, but that was exactly what was in my mind. Jim Carrey from The Mask when he's in the office. And he's holding it up to his face and it doesn't work. And he's just going like... <laughs> and he's making all these noises and jumping around. That is what I was just doing. That's what, that was in my head. I just didn't say it. I don't know how many people are going to understand that. <laughs> that was the Swedish chef. <laughs> hey, is the mask in the Library of Congress? Is it? Because it, it better be. That's like, it has to be, right? Can somebody look that up? Is, is Jim Carrey's the mask in the Library of Congress? If, why? No, not the mask itself. Like the movie prop. I'm talking about the the movie. <laughs> I think people in Congress need, uh, like want to go look at it. Yeah, if this one movie, somebody said it. If this somebody said they shot it into space. If this one movie they should shoot into space, it's the mask. Just confuse the fuck out of all the aliens. There's only Jim Carrey's The Mask and and a wheel. Or like a like a car tire. Like what the hell is going on with what what is this? Just that would be crazy, right? What the fuck even is this thing? A car tire with the hubcap on. That's all of our inventions. <laughs> Oh, we found this strange thing. Saya, look what we found. We pulled it into the beam. It's a, it's a wheel. That's what they put in their, uh, their thing, in their time capsule. A fucking wheel in the Jim Carrey movie? Well, we aren't going there. They would never... No, we, they, we would never get invaded. We would never be invaded. Why would you invade this place? Why would you ever care? No, no, no. We can just skip that planet. They just... They sent out a wheel. And a Jim Carrey movie. We don't have to worry about that place. Don't shoot any interesting technology there, right? It's like, oh man, we should share our tech. No, keep, are you kidding me? Don't send an iPhone up there. Send a burnt torch. And a wheel. They're going to skip our planet. As isolationist. Uh, would you want the aliens to know the technology that we have? I, I don't want... What, oh, yeah, let's make sure the satellite communicates. No. All right, anyways. Where were we? Um, um, it's not. Did uh, Jim Carrey, the mask, is not in the Library of Congress, but Shrek is. Yeah, I don't put. I send up like a stick with a, a, a like a cloth wrapping around it and like a shark tooth on it. Look, yes, tools. We have tool. We tool. Oh, poor Earth. No, 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 no. We just leave them. Okay, here we go.
Send up a stick. <laughs> yeah, the fact, the fact it would be in a rocket ship means we have the technology to have a rocket ship communicate in the first place. That would be even more bizarre, right? Why... We're not fooling anybody. Why would they put this in the... We, we have rocket fuel, but they're showing us that they have primitive tools. <laughs> <laughs> That's stupid. Uh, yeah, never mind. What I said was dumb. We have the technology to throw that shit on. Whatever. All right, let's move on. I fucked up. I fucked up. You trail along behind the goblins like a shadow. can't move on yet. That was really dumb. I don't know, for some reason I was thinking about, in my mind, I'm thinking about a tool with like earth carved in it somehow being shot out of a cannon into space. Like it's not a rocket. We just have a bag floating around in space. It's not on a rocket ship. There's a bag in space that they come across and it's shitty tools and a wheel, right? That's what I was thinking of. Like, we don't leave a rocket ship, it's just a bag. <laughs> like these, these, like, primitive cavemen are just taking their tools and throwing them as hard as they can into the air. It'll get, we'll get soon. Strong. Reach space. Imagine if we did kind of what Elon Musk did with the car, but instead slingshot out a metal box with sticks and shiny rocks. Yeah! Who cares? Uh. <laughs> alright, alright. I'm, I'm done with- I'm done. We're gonna move on. It's just too stupid to not at least spend five minutes on it. What if wood was rare to them? That's true too. Like, shit, we gotta be careful. What if trees? What if wood was an unbelievable resource? And the aliens are like, wait a minute, they have wood on this planet? Liquefy it and take the, all the trees. Don't send anything to space. They can come find us, okay? We don't send anything to space. Some people might see it as a threat. Uh, boss, there's a metal box here that has earth carved on it, and there's an axe in here. Shoot the fucking beam at it. That's an act of violence. That's a threat. Please move on. I have an essay due. Well, go do your essay. You're assuming that aliens are as stupid as we are. This is a declaration of war. The aliens finally show up one day. I think the president goes on camera. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's the president. I just need to make sure everyone understands that the aliens are arriving on Tuesday. And they think we're all primitive cave men and cave women. So, for one day only, please everybody... Don't speak in any languages. Everyone crawl around and say noises and grow your beards out as long as you can. We keep up, we gotta keep up like the, the actual thing here. We could keep the, the personas up. The aliens land, everyone just kind of like throwing rocks, like making sounds. <laughs> grow a beard by Tuesday. Yeah, some people can do that, not me. You do it in the Bernie voice. No. <laughs> all right, let's go. Destroy all the cars. Yeah, unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, my fellow Americans, uh, all cars need to be destroyed. 
uh, or not destroyed, but hidden. Uh, there'll be government-issued tarps to put over all your vehicles and all your houses. Uh, and everyone is to dig a hole five feet deep in their backyard and hang out in there for just six hours while the aliens rock around and uh, survey the planet. How long would you have to keep that up? What if they wanted to hang out? Oh, this is beautiful. What a wonderful planet. And they're so primitive. I think we'll stay here for uh, two or three uh, parsequins. Oh, two or three parsequins. Was that a week? Oh, on your planet, that's 3,000 years. Oh, well. Well. I'm going to do it for a little bit longer. <laughs> and they know, right? These motherfuckers know. Ah, yeah, I wonder how long they're going to keep this up. They know. They want to see, like, just how long we'll do this for. <laughs> I feel like you came from an alternate reality. I'm from this reality. There. What do you mean... Look, just because the Marvel movies came out and we're like, look, there's a Spider-Man and there's another Spider-Man. We don't know shit. Guys, it's just us and the cockroaches, okay? I'm sorry. It's just us and the cockroaches and like the the bunny rabbits. There's nothing else. Well, it doesn't matter. That's a big spoiler. A spoiler for what? I don't know. Look, I okay, I get the theory. But the fact that, okay, so there's, what, there's like an infinite amount of me sitting in this chair having an infinite amount of rants about the alien joke? No, it's just us and the bugs. There's nothing else. It's just us and the fucking earwigs. <laughs> Who is he talking to? I know I'm stalling. All right, all right. I'm not stalling, though. This is just an interesting conversation. What if they came down and they were large, sentient earwigs? I get to stick around. Because I they will look at, at my, all my history here, and they'll be like, this guy was talking about earwigs, and he talked about how they were cool, and they were an awesome group of uh, beings. And I, they would, I would become an ambassador to Earth. Sorry, guys. Would you ever eat earwig meat? No. All right. You trail along behind the goblins like a shadow. God, we've been, we've been sitting for like 10 minutes. The Vaclands tribes are ready. The first goblin general hisses. The second goblin makes a chittering noise, something close to a laugh. Ready to run through the city like a river of molten steel at a word from the king. A few words, but I have learned a few of myself. Hey, hey, what was that? Freeze or keep up. I'll probably get high, right? Hide over here. Freeze. You freeze. The goblins keep walking away out of earshot, not stopping. They do not look around, but continue talking in low voices. Okay. Catch up. You hurry up and catch up with the goblins. I thought I said a corpse. The tunnel turns a corner. Something glints from the side of the sewer. I gotta keep up. I have to keep up. I have to keep up. I missed it? You missed the spell line? What? I missed the spell line? No, I didn't. Keep up? But I'm going to run right into them. Keep up. I heard nothing. The other replies. You heard a keep pace just behind them in the dark. Further on. 
You know one of the lines? One goblin is quizzing the other. The goblin spits in agreement. I ever heard the Mad King whispered to himself. Mm -hmm. pride. You can't believe your luck. It's the second half of Theta's spell line. I got them all now. I win. Got it. We've got all the lines. We just don't know the order, but it's okay. This is the first time I'm ever going to complete part two. Truly actually getting the good end and not the bad end every single time. Okay. Something. Let's look at it. You stop to look at it, losing the sight of the goblins. It's a vial of... It's a vial of potion. Sniff it. You uncork it and sniff it. It's Blimbleberry. Quaff it. I should probably quaff it. Yeah, I quaff it. You unstopper the Blimberry potion and knock it back quickly. You feel a little better and all traces of hunger are gone also. The goblins disappear. So, does that actually mean that I know everything? Do I know the whole thing? I got the whole thing. By Korga's grace and Forga's pride. One lock made of golems hide. Tumblers two sealed deep inside. I bid you portals open wide. Got it. That's definitely the order. That's the rhyme, right? Okay, I can turn back or we can keep going. Might as well just keep going. If the king knew you even knew that much, tell him and I cut your throat. Ah, uh, stay quiet and maybe we'll get out of this. Oh, wait. Stay quiet. Shh. Maybe we'll cut his throat. Just then you see more lights up ahead. It seems the sewer is opening out into a wider space. The opening. All the lines rhyme? Do they? One lock made of golems hide. Tumblers two sealed deep inside. My corg oh, they all rhyme. <laughs> they all uh, whatever. <laughs> My uh, You slip into the hall. It is warm with the fetid breath of a thousand creatures who drink and laugh and clash swords down in the muck. On his throne, their king seems to be sleeping or else they have killed him by accident. He's a man, not a goblin. How does he control this rabble? You wait, transfixed by the strange scene. The king coughs suddenly. The effect is bizarre. At the noise, every goblin in the great chamber freezes and looks up. Interesting. The man is thin, as if he has not eaten in months, and pale, as if he has been in the dark just as long. His hair is long and gray, and he slumps over the side of his throne, as though desperately ill. His clothes are long, soiled robes that perhaps were once quite fine. On his hand is a ring, a diamond ring, which he gazes at periodically. And on his head, he wears a gray circlet of a dull silver metal you cannot quite place. The king pushes on the arm of his chair, attempting to stand, then shivers and falls down. Silence. The chamber is suddenly quiet. <clears throat> Look at his face. You peer through the gloom, through the grime and dirt and the thickness of his beard, trying to see his face. There's something familiar about it. You've seen it somewhere before. The king fingers the circlet on his head, as if scared it will slip. My creatures, the time is almost on us. As the night draws in, we will rise up and open the gates. We will rub this filthy city clean. He is broken off into a fit of coughing. <laughs> you keep waiting, wanting to see what comes next. 
The long journey is nearly over. The process I began when I blinded Lord Theta and left him a beggar. Finally, the council will be destroyed and the city will be cleansed. It's not Dumbledore. <laughs> so this is, this is Sansa's. Yeah. This is the first noble. Uh, I'm afraid I, if I keep listening, you stay hidden. A goblin close by, by your elbow murmurs. How much longer do we have to listen to this? His companion silences him with a talon to the arm. Shut up. Wait and listen. You stay hidden and wait. The king finally gets to his feet and raises a wizened arm into the air. I will open the gates for you tonight. And we will make this city pure. The king raises a cheer, and the goblins as one cheer back, throwing their swords up in the air. A thousand blades flash, and the confusion when they land is extreme. Every goblin cowering for cover, and then squabbling to retrieve their blade. Alright, let's go. Move now. It's time to get the hell out of here. Creep to a ladder. Or return to the sewer. Well, I think we can get out this way. Sticking to the shadows, you begin to creep around the perimeter of the hall, aiming for one of those long ladders that disappear up into the darkness. You get about halfway before the goblins nearby turn, pushing at each other, and you are forced to freeze. The king calls for silence, but the goblins do not hear him. They are still in a mess with their swords. Go, 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 get out, get out. Just leave. Just run, 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 run. Keep going, keep going, keep going. No, no, no! You creep further around the edge of the hall. The king calls again for silence, clutching his circlet with one hand. This time, the goblins fall silent. You realize with a heavy heart that you've missed the best opportunity you will get to escape the chamber by the ladder. Fuck him. What? Okay. Look at his face. All right. I, okay, you know who it is. Familiar. All right, go. Andy, rewind. That's fine. Uh, yep. Keep going. Make a move. <laughs> <laughs> we get out. The long journey is nearly over. The process I began when I blinded Lord Theta and left him a beggar. Blah, 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 blah. Let's go. And we're out. How much longer do we have to listen to this? Make a move. We're out. They raise a cheer. Hooray. Make a move. We're out. Get out. Leave. Quick. Taking advantage of the confusion, you scurry quickly up the ladder. For a few rungs, you are in the open. It must look like a strange oversized rat climbing the rigging in this underground cell. But you climb fast and quietly and are quickly lost into the shadows overhead once more. You climb the ladder into a narrow stone chimney, which climbs at an angle. After a while, the ladder gives out, and there is nothing but stone above you in the distance. A circle of light. Oh, God. I'm gonna fall right back down on my back. Gum? Raz? Sharpened blade? With, oh, I can probably stick it in the side. Force field. Float in the air. Float would work. Yeah, let's float. <clears throat> float in the air. 
You cast the spell, making your body featherweight. You then paw your way up the stone chimney, pushing off the walls with your hands and feet, as if you were dancing up towards the light. You emerge in a grateful heap to the fresh air of the outside world. It's oh, it's right here. We're I got the I, we're let's go. Let's go, 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 go. You've emerged from a well house in a clearing in the shadow of the city wall. Looking around, you realize how far you've come. On the other side of this clearing is the north gate itself. Wasting no time, you stride over to the gate. We gotta go now. You reach the other side of the clearing unscathed and stand below the enormous doors. Okay. What's the... The North Gate spell. I know what the first line is. Here it is. Something that the Korga's grace, one lock deep inside I bid you. Korga, lock, deep, bid. Let's go. Recite the spell. You knock firmly on the door until you wake with the voice. You knock firmly on the door until you wake the voice within. Do you know the spell to open this gate? You close your eyes and try to recall the scratched poem in the sewer chamber. <clears throat> By Korga's grace and Forga's pride, one lock made of Gollum's hide, tumblers too sealed deep inside, I bid you portals open wide. You stand back to see what effect your lines have had. The voice has gone silent. You wait impatiently to see what will happen. Then the gate creaks. The tumblers drop. And the wooden panels begin to move. The door is opening. Booming out, the voice declares, The gate is under your control. But it is moving slowly. Looking over your shoulder, you see an army of goblins emerging from a well shaft and they are racing towards you. Uh oh. Do I just run? I've, I don't think I've ever done this. Do I just run through? Go, 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 go. You rush through the gate into the backlands. We got, just go. Go, 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 go. This is, I'm not waiting. Beyond the north gate. In the darkness around you, figures are moving, pouring towards the gate into the city. Inside, you see the goblins still coming. Close it on them. Gate! Close! The gate obeys immediately, swinging shut like a trap. From the low hills around, red-faced marsh goblins are springing up and pouring towards the sealed gate like flies into a fallen ox. They begin to scramble on top of one another, trying to bridge the wall with their own bodies. Destroy the goblins. The goblins must be destroyed. As though on command, a ghostly figure forms in the air before you. It is Lorag. You control the gate! Use it! Uh, you do it! Uh, I don't know how. Try. It is hopeless. How can you use a magic you do not know? You close your eyes, feeling your anger and frustration rising. The hated goblins, this meddling specter, the long and difficult road behind, and the one still to come, all seem to bite into your very soul like wolf teeth. There is suddenly a terrible sound and a smell of burning. Open my eyes. You open your eyes, there's not a goblin in sight. Just blackened grass around the gate. And black soot in piles on top of the wall. The ghost nods slowly to you. I hope I had that on. All the... <laughs> I'll keep it on, fuck it. All the hatred of a whole city, of thieves and liars and murderers, stored for centuries. Ah, a little leaked out into the red eyes. The rest was waiting for this. For one, strong of heart enough to use it. Go, be safe. The long road is long. Huh. 
He gestures to the path ahead. Be safe. You nod and turn to go. So what? I, so I burn the city. So that's my. I did it. No, just the goblins, though. This is getting intense. All right, here we go. Outside Kare, into the backlands. From a short distance away, you look back to see the plain outside the gate is quite empty. Not a single marsh goblin remains. Not a single short sword or hooked pick. It is like they have been wiped from the surface of the earth. And inside Kare, something similar must have occurred. As where there was the sound of clashing swords, there is now only silence. You have saved Kare. A foul city, perhaps. But not one whose citizens deserve to die by a goblin's sword. But it has been at a cost to your strength. You turn your back. Your own road lies ahead. Through the plains of Badubak. And on towards Mampang. The backlands await. You remember the words of the Sight Master Sergeant as you left the outpost settlement. Once you have crossed the city port of traps, you will enter the backlands. They say that day and night are controlled by forces other than the sun. And from Kare too, your progress will be watched. To Badubak. Your journey across Kare is complete. In the course of your journey, you committed murder and saved the city port of Kare from destruction. You played 11 games of Swindle Stones, winning nine and losing two. You learned the truth about what the crown does, a riddle about the sleepless ram, and that silver weapons harm the undead. You collected a fantastic number of magical artifacts, a large lump of beeswax, a cloth skullcap, two giant's teeth, seven goblin's teeth, a black face mask, a green-haired wig, a bracelet of bone, one sun jewel, a bamboo pipe also. You found a bottle of poison, a bottle of bark essence, a bottle of snake bite antidote, and a tinderbox. You're very happy, considering this was your grocery list, and it is now complete. You're still armed only with your original sword, and have no rations and 25 gold pieces, and a spell book. The adventure continues in Sorcery 3, The Seven Serpents. Out now. It is out now. So there you go. There's part one and part two. <clears throat> uh, what we're going to do here, I'm going to take a BRB. I'm going to pee. Refill my tea. And I'm, we're going to, uh, I'm going to, we're going to at least start uh, part three. I want you to see the map. I want you to see kind of the mechanics. Uh, we're going to keep going. So I'll be right back. Go grab a refill. Go to the bathroom. We'll continue. But that was... Car this is probably my favorite of the three. If I have to rank them, it goes Kare, the Seven Serpents, uh, Part 1, and then Part 4. And it's not that I don't like Part 4. It's just... there's Part 4 is awesome. It's just... It's very, very hard. <laughs> part 4 is very hard. But no spoilers if you know the game, if you played it, or if you watched the last, uh, when we did this years ago. But I do love uh, Part 3. I think Part 2 and Part 3 are the best. Okay, uh, I'll be right back. Go get a refill. See you guys in a minute. BRB.
Okay, I'm back. I am back, but I need to make sure I can get this to work. Okie dokie. Did you fall in? No, I made another T. Yeah, I know we're uh, we're effing right now. It's fine. It's because I'm um, I was downloading uh something, downloading the episode. Okay, okay. Make sure I can capture this. Oh, I can't hear anything. Can you guys hear anything? Hey, there we go. Okay. The SpongeBob. Wait, I thought it. Why did I read that as Sponge? I don't even know what you were writing. I don't even care. <laughs> I thought you were asking me a question about SpongeBob. Okay, so we're going to do part three. Part three. Incoming. Here we go. Night falls. Wait, make sure everyone's here. We good? Night falls on this, the eighth day of your journey from Analand. To the east, mighty mountains claw at the stars. You stand on the edge of Badubak, a wild and evil place. Beyond lies Mampang Fortress, the Archmage, and the Crown of Kings. The path has been long. Title update? We will in a second. Leaving the hills, you journeyed into Kare and saved it from destruction by goblins. You braved the deadly portal traps of the city. Ancient, cruel magic designed to trap the unwary. And you faced an army of enchanted werewolves as they sought to overthrow the first noble. Well, I fought one werewolf, but, you know, I could say an army. I fought one werewolf. That's fine. <laughs> one werewolf attacked me on the road, and uh, I killed it. But the backlands are different. But the plains of Baudubak will be different. Once long ago, this land thrived, prospering in the warm shadow of the fortress of sorcerers, high in the Zanzunu peaks. Then something changed. They say the last refugee to reach Kare declared only, they are all gone. The North Gate was sealed and the Backlands left to die. Now the gates stand open. They say the land beyond the gates is cursed. No one from the young country of Analand has ever crossed this wilderness before. You will be the first. The old world is counting on you. But already you have no food. This stage of your journey will be punishing, but you cannot turn back. Ladies and gentlemen, Inkle presents a story by Steve Jackson. Steve Jackson's sorcery! Part 3. The Seven Serpents. Is the gate of Kare. Again, let's take a look at this. Here you go. It's very large. It's uh, like five different World of Warcraft zones. And something else happens here, too, that's even more ridiculous. And you'll find out if you don't know. And if you do know, don't tell anybody. Because it's cool. 
it's cool. And we're going to let everybody figure that out. No spoilers. Here we go. The stones of the old road disappear under a layer of dust and sand. At your back looms the great wall of the city port of Kare. Ahead, there is nothing but an empty waste. And the night. Look back. You cast a glance at the city port. Even now, Vic is taking control. The baying of his wolves echoes across the plains. That's a storyline we did not do. But um, the city's there, and Vic apparently has taken it. Look up at the stars. You turn your gaze from Kare to the stars, wondering what fresh secrets they may hold this far from the walls of Annaland. Into the plains. Every step along the broken road takes you further from safety and into the unknown. Something, the ape, perhaps, sets your senses tingling. You're not alone out here. Is that the screech of a bird you hear, or a distant scream? We could talk to animals. We could, uh, just throw a fireball into the air. We could sense danger. <laughs> Let's talk to animals, right? Let's try it. It doesn't cost anything. You cast the spell and pull on the wig. In the distance, you hear the screeching of birds. But as the spell takes hold, the sound resolves into words. <laughs> There's one. <laughs> he looks like a tasty morsel. <laughs> I claim first strike. <laughs> a moment later, a ferocious nighthawk has plunged from the sky. Talons outstretched for your neck. Worst voice. Shut up. Shut up. That's how you do a bird. That's a bird voice. What do you want me to do? All right, I'm going to uh I'm going to roll. You hurl yourself to one side just in time, and the sharp claws sweep past your neck to rake the dirt. I will shred you to your gizzards. Tasty one. The bird wheels up into the sky to rejoin its group. Take his eyes, take his eyes. You count four birds circling, ready to attack. Shout in defiance. <laughs> Try to take me. I have killed a manticore. We will take your blood. All right. Bad enough. Are they stupid? I think they're intelligent, aren't they? Oh, that would be all right. They're, I don't think they're magical. Well, they don't talk. I can I can understand them because I have the wig on. I could put up a wall. I can't do anything expensive because I only have, what, seven stamina? Mm. I'm going to say Wait a minute. I could I float up to them. I'm floating up to them. And I'm going to Okay, let's float. You cast the spell and feel yourself lifting gently off the ground as your weight is reduced to that of a feather. The Nighthawks do not pause. One swoops talons, spiking your shoulder and knocking you sprawling to the ground. I prick you. I'm dead. You stay down, hoping the bird will leave you for dead. But Nighthawks do not attack for pleasure, but for food. Lying still makes them bold, and soon all three are diving for you. 
Then, quite suddenly, the Nighthawks break formation. Something else is shimmering into visibility, in their very midst. You settle back to the ground as your spell wears off. <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> so wait, they hit me in the in the air, midair, and I'm lying down, but pretending to be lagged out of the server. I'm just floating there, falling slowly on my side. All right, I'm running. Crawl. You belly crawl up to higher ground while behind you the strangest of battles ensues. The wing of one Nighthawk snaps upwards like a broken branch. A second is ripped into feathers by invisible claws. The remaining birds scatter. There's nothing left but your mysterious savior. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm going to stay hidden. You stay low, hoping the creature will not see you. But there is a rush of air just in front of you. Whatever it is has landed. You hear the movement of unseen feathered wings. And then, at last, you understand. This creature is a gold crest eagle from the king's own Eerie in Annaland. The Eerie is deep behind the Shumantanti wall. It must have flown for three days to reach you, but why? The creature, slowly becoming visible, sees you have recognized it. It tilts its beak. Bow. You bow your head to the eagle. It opens its beak in reply, and something falls to the ground. It is a message cylinder. Whatever it contains must be of vital importance, or the king would not have risked revealing your location like this to del deliver it to you. Take the tube. You reach down and pick up the tube. Inside is a rolled parchment sealed with the royal seal of the King of Annaland. But you pause for a moment and sigh. The King has accidentally sent you his letter to Santa Claus. There must have been some kind of mix up. <laughs> okay, let me read this. We trust these tidings reach you in fair health, but must warn you of impending peril. Your mission is discovered. The Manpang's eyes have spied our plan, and word is on its way to the Dark Fortress. Too late, we discovered our unwelcome eavesdroppers, and news of your quest is being carried towards High Zaman by the Seven Serpents, the Archmage's most trusted servants. By now, they will have reached the Backlands, and here they will divide to complete their journey separately. If you are still able, seek them out, for they must stop to rest and eat. Destroy the creatures before they reach their goal, else the Archmage will prepare a deadly welcome for you. Find Shadrach, the Hermit, for advice. For naught moves through the backlands without his knowledge. Our hearts are with you. The seal of fucking George Washington. Thank the eagle. You look up, but the gold crest eagle has already rendered itself invisible once more. You feel the rush of air as its great wings lift it from the ground. Then you are alone. Destroy it or keep it? I feel like maybe keep it because this might be proof. Like, hey, I've got the, the King of Annaland has this seal here. Maybe it's I could use it for help. That's possible, right? Or destroy it because if somebody finds it on me, then they know what I'm doing here. Keep it to show the hermit. Yeah, I'm not sure either way how this would work. Um, yeah, we'll do a poll. Should I destroy the message or hold on to it in case I need to use it? It's pretty 50-50 on what would happen. I need food and I need to sleep. Because this is bad. One or two.
What are we thinking? Oh, let me run it. One, two. There you go. Ah, there we go. Cool. Starting off pretty strong to keep it. Yeah, it's one and two. One destroy, two keep. Isn't paper edible? Um, not really. Yeah, two is keep. Yeah, one and two. Come on, what are you talking about? Alright, we're gonna keep it. You roll the message up and slip it into your pack. It would seem the backlands are not as deserted as you had supposed. You must find these seven serpents and destroy them, or your journey will be for nothing. Two new clues. What are the clues? Seven serpents. Seven serpents threaten your journey, for they carry a message that will warn the Archmage of your coming. Uh, Shadrach the Hermit can help you. Only silver weapons can harm the undead. You are given a clue about the backlands. For sleeping of the sleepless rams, seek the one they call the Sham. Okay. Still have all my shit, right? Yeah. All right, back to the road. The stars turn in the sky overhead. Taking the pole as your guide, you rejoin the old road and make your way north. Before you, the backlands stretch away to a dim horizon. How can you hope to locate seven serpents in such a wilderness? My spirit will guide me. The ape. My spirit will guide me. You will no doubt require the ape even more than ever before, out here where nothing else can be trusted. And the ape has told you to walk off of a cliff. So you do it. No decision is permanent. Rewind at any time. Did it, what, was, that supposed, was that wrong? Uh, after about half an hour, you see a deep black line across the earth up ahead and catch your step just in time. You are one pace away from the edge of a sheer cliff. A few loose stones disappear over the edge and clatter away into the dark. Look for a way down. Rest until daylight. Uh, I need stamina. Sun? What would that do here? How? Huff. What would that do? Sun jewel? Oh, so I can see down. Oh, I'm gonna do that. Doesn't cost. I, I don't want to do anything that costs stamina. Looking to the stars, you craft the magic, and the sun jewel in your back begins to pulse and throb with a brilliant, blinding light. With the light from the jewel, you look over the cliff and make out a set of worn carved steps leading downwards. It seems there definitely is a path here, or there was, many hundreds or thousands of years ago. Climb down. You creep towards the stone steps and begin to make your way down. Okay, that, that works. The cold night lingers on. Using the light from your sun jewel, you feel your way forward. But halfway down, the glow on the gem begins to fade. You begin to curse your decision to come this way. <laughs> Row the jewel? No! What? I don't want to throw it. This thing is very, very useful. Keep going. You focus on placing your feet carefully and continue to make your way down the cliff face like a goat. The glow from your gem fades and you are plunged into darkness once more. The ground is closer than you realize, and when the staircase runs out and turns into loose scree, it is a rough but thankfully short slide to the bottom. You land with a thump. 
the base of the cliff. Why would I have thrown the jewel? You've reached the bottom of the cliff. The sky is already beginning to warm in the east. The rock wall rises behind you, cutting out half the sky. The staircase is now invisible, just shadows on shadows in the craggy rock. In the near distance across the plains and away from the cliff, you can see a dark shape jutting up from the ground like a gigantic sword. Rest here, out in the open, in the dark. Zen. Mm. Zip, I don't have... I could teleport. I didn't get whatever the green ring is. Uh, Ow might be okay. That's one stamina. Anything free? What do I have that's free? Heal disease. This is, three, this is a lot, isn't it? Um... I'll do how. Because. Yeah, let's do how. I'm gonna die if I'm not careful. You bind the starling to shape around you, and a familiar, calm voice begins to speak. The voice tells you that the stairs are long since destroyed and will never be rebuilt. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. I want safe passage, not. the. History of the stairs. I'll rest. Let me look at the cliff. You gaze up the soaring arc of the cliff, barren rock, dusted by what little scrub can cling onto its sides. It is as if some great clawed hand had scooped out the earth. The foot of the cliff is pitted with shadow holes. No doubt dug by animals. You peer through the gloom, trying to make out more details. Whatever the structure is, it does not appear natural. But equally, it does not appear to be intact. It seems to be sliding into the earth. Strange. The backlands were said to be uninhabited. I, I have to sleep. We, we have to. I have to rest here. You find an old foxhole and scramble inside. At least you've eaten already today, so do not need to eat again. To avoid hunger, though, more food will make you stronger. You'll need to eat once a day. All right, close my eyes. Nothing bad. Nothing bad, nothing bad, nothing bad. Nothing bad. You close your eyes and let your tiredness overtake you. The silence is loud in your ears. Slowly, you're understanding the true loneliness of this place. You long for human company, even the withering insult of Flanker. But there is no one here. You feel quite safe, and you do not dream. Cliff base. During the past day, you've become weaker, reached the pit of the backlands, and found four new clues. You pull yourself out of your hole and stand up. Okay, we got two health. Nearby is a stone tower, the only stone structure in the whole barren landscape. It is the shape you saw here at night. Look at the tower. The tower stands some way across the plain, almost in the foothills of the ridge. It lists to one side, but appears not to have crumbled into ruin. Let's move on. This, then, is the plain of Badubak. An endless expanse of dust, broken only by the thin outline of an ancient road. No one from Anland has been here. No one even knows what happened to this place. Once, it was the Archmage's country, his fields and paddocks. And now it is too barren to even be a place of death. What do we do? This is quite, this is quite the early decision. <laughs> we just came in and said, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> All right. Uh, I'll get a poll going because we're either going to go because uh, let's let's give it a, a big picture here. 
Where are they going? This way? Right? This way. Or this way. So, I'm. it's going to be four choices, but I imagine... Yeah. So, here, ready? Pay attention. One, two, three, four. Again. Follow the cliff. One. Into the plane. Two. Follow this cliff. Three. The old road. Four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Got it? Again? One, two, three, four. 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 You got it? Four. Two, four, three, one, four, four, three, four, 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 two, four, two, one. Did I get it right? Did I get the code right? Where are we going? Baby sensory. <laughs> hey, wait, what was it again? I wasn't paying attention. Oh, that's easy. That it, it, it four. Or you could, oh, you could one, or it's two, you could go four, or four, or four, or three. All right, let's go four. You leave the shadow of the cliff of the road that cuts across the plain. The air stirs a little, still cold, but at least fresh. From here, the path is uncertain. Badubak is a wasteland, and there is no pass through the great ridge that forms its eastern border. The forest of Snata is uncharted. The Zanzunu peaks and Mampang seem remote. The forest of Snata to the east of the ridge is uncharted, and the Klatabak steppes are said to be home only to under-evolved half-humans. No tracks climb the horns of Ilklala. No tracks climb the horns of Ilklala that lie beyond the forest, and there is no bridge across the great lake beyond that. There may be no road at all. When the Archmage sent his birdmen to steal the crown of kings, they flew. But you must walk. La la. There is no alternative. The future of the old world depends on you finding your way across this lonely dust bowl. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um. Well, where? Okay. Strike out? North? The blasted tree along the road. Okay, well, we're going... We're not going this way. You've already decided to go this way. We're not going from here to here to here. You had a choice to go from here to here and you didn't choose it. So we're going this way. So you do get a choice here, though. You get a one, two, three. <laughs> la, la. You didn't choose to go that way. You chose to go this way. One, two, three. One. Two, three. Three, two, one. Pretty sick fucking beat. Hey, dude, I just joined. What's happening? <laughs> he said, 
I actually just joined and I thought my computer was actually glitching. <laughs> I got you. I got you. I got you. All right, we're going one and then I'm going to start making some decisions. You know what I mean? We're going to the blasted tree. You leave the road and walk across the desolate plain. A few clouds scud across the sky. After a while of walking, you see something to break the monotony. Too tall and thin for a skewer of rock or a building. You cannot place it until you get close. It's a single tree, leafless and dead, tilting from the desolate soil. Climb the branches? That seems... The tree must be the last remnant of an ancient forest. The why this particular trunk has survived when all the others fell is not clear. And that is not all. A rope ladder hangs from one of the higher branches of the tree. Okay. Climb the rope ladder? This is like a tree house? You scramble up the rope ladder to get a view across the lands, but the branches seem to be alive. Twisting and bending as you climb, they are closing in around you like a trap. Untie the ladder. <laughs> it's like a Three Stooges routine. Okay, untie the ladder. The knots holding the ladder to the branch are thick with age, but you manage to work them free. The branch underneath seems to lift in relief as it is removed. A moment later, another branch draws backwards behind you and releases, knocking you painfully to the ground. For a moment, you hear a sound almost like a laugh. Who's there? Stranger. Stranger. Show yourself! There is no response. Surely this land is a desert. You're entirely alone, are you not? We'll find out. Mmm, <laughs> burn the tree. <laughs> I could burn the tree. I could read minds, which would be interesting. Uh, sense danger. I think that's all we have. I only have four HP, so that would be bad. Let's read minds. It's free. You weave the enchantment, pulling on the cloth, skullcap as you do. You reach out with your mind. But what you find is not what you expect. There are no humans, or even any creatures in the vicinity. Instead, there is an intelligence. Something heavy and dark and thick. With thoughts like ancient oil. Talk? Or listen? Let's talk. You reach out further, trying to connect with this strange other presence. You seem to make no progress, and then the spell fades and you open your eyes to find yourself staring another pair formed by the curved twigs of the tree itself. A face. Stranger, you are lost. What makes you say, who are you? What are you? Be warned, I will not be played with. I am a spirit and an old friend. Okay. Well, how are you a friend? Can you guide me? The branches flutter and break in a sudden gust of wind, the face disappearing for a moment. You seek the whereabouts of Shadrach of Baduba. Uh, yeah. Where, where is he? Turn like a leaf in the morning. 
to the fish tail rock. He is expecting you. Another strong breeze catches the branches and disturbs them, and when they settle, the face has disappeared. Fishtail rock. Come back. <laughs> Come back here, you motherfucker. Uh, wait. You wait a short while, but it's no good. You walk away from the shade of the tree. Oh, Alright, we got a clue. Fishtail rock. All right, let's keep going this way. We're not going back this way. You've already made your choice. East along the road. I told you that was a major decision. Can you pray to get healed? I can. I don't want to use it unless I have to, though. You walk on across the plain until you meet the edge of an old road. As the morning moves on, the wind begins to rise. The road snakes across the dust bowl in the near, in the near distance. You make out something through the haze. Not a tower, but a spire of rock. Seems to flicker strangely. From behind you, a voice says, Excuse me. Turn around. You turn around to find the road deserted. There is no one in sight in any direction. Where are you? You call half expecting flanker to materialize up from the dust to greet you. There's no reply. The cold wind whistles around you. The plains feel suddenly far emptier than a moment before. You continue along the ghost road. Okay. You get a choice. One or two. One, or two, one, two. One is towards the cliff. Two is head up east this way and go. So one is to go down probably here, over here. Two is to go like here. One is cliff. Two is head east. <gasps> what do you think? 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 Please, can you hit the two button a lot again? Uh, no. Um, no. Sorry, no. <laughs> uh, it's close. Very close. Can you please hit the three button? Three. I'll give you that. I mean, I'll give I'll give you this too, right? Like two? No. Yeah, I'll give you one. Uh, a lot of you guys don't want to go to the cliff. Interesting. Okay, I don't remember what this is. I don't remember what this is either. I of all the games forget these next two parts more than anything. Kare is my favorite, so I obviously remember a lot of stuff, but I don't remember very much from this. Very much gone from my brain. Alright, we're going east. You follow the old road. The sun is hot now. The road forks here, with the main path snaking up the mountainside to the east. Rocks have tumbled down the slope and all but covered the road. You cast your gaze east toward the towering Badubak Ridge. The main peak is lost in the haze at the end of the long winding road that climbs up the slope. Looking north, the road winds along the rocky edges of the foothills. A particularly impressive stone stupa stands out a little way along. Stones shift and move underfoot as you walk. What do you mean two was cliff? What are you talking about? Two is the road. All right. I'm going to make this decision. This 
this way heading towards the Clatterbox steps or up here into more of this kind of plains area. Let's go up. The ground underfoot turns into rocks and scree. The sun has reached its highest point now. Out of the shade, the air is baking hot. You pause to rest in the shadow of a large rock spire that sticks out from the dirt like a claw through cloth. The rock is a single shattered spire, perhaps once part of the mountain range to the east, or perhaps driven up through the ground by some geological quirk. At the base of the rock is the mouth of a cave, perhaps stuffed with buried treasure. You approach the cave with one hand on your blade. The cave appears to go back some distance into pitch blackness. Someone seems to have scratched a message into the rock inside the cave. It is only just legible and must be ancient. In the thin sunlight falling into the cave, you can make out the ancient scratch message with some difficulty. Stranger, I am waiting very long ago. Summon you. Call my name to the skies and I will... Dra. The message on the cave wall suggested calling out a name. But what name should you call? <laughs> Blanker! Where are you? Shadrach. Jan. <laughs> well, imagine calling Jan's name here. I mean, we're going to do this, right? Because that's... Shadrach! You cry the name across the plains, and the echo of it seems to set off a distant avalanche. The ground begins to shake and rumble, and you stagger to your knees. The very earth is moving as though it was splitting or merging back together. You reach down to steady yourself, only to find that the grass is growing between your fingers. You pick yourself unsteadily to your feet, feeling sick and unwell. Everything around you is the same, but everything is different. The rock has two spires, for one thing. The cave seems smaller and darker. And in a fire pit built into the scrub is its mouth is a fire burning. From inside you hear the gentle sound of singing. Are you guys starting to understand why a part three is cool? You will soon. You guys just got Elden Ringed. Yeah. Yep, there it is. You got Elden Ringed again. You can take a few guesses. Okay. Uh, we're gonna listen. You stop and listen. The singer is a man with a voice like gravel moving over ice. He sings in a language you do not recognize, but its tune feels that once arresting and ancient, and the melody seems to soothe your soul. You approach the fire. Call out for Shadrach. Shadrach! I am here! The singing stops abruptly. There's a coughing and a wheezing sound, and then an old man hobbles from outside the cave, limping on a stick. This must be Shadrach himself but you recognize the face as that of the tree spirit you met earlier. Ah, oh, it's you. I have been expecting you. He waves a hand around the landscape. Welcome back. Welcome back. Just so. You have come a long, long way, my Annalander friend. I know your mission, of course. I know all about you. And you know about me, I hope. My name is Shadrach. Sh Ooh! I, I, it was worth keeping. Show him the eagle's message. You pull the message from your pack. 
I was given this. It mentions you. Hmm. The diviners are most impressive. Or perhaps our meeting has simply been remembered. Yes, that is more likely. Then his eyes narrow on as he reads. Seven serpents, yes. But now I see why they have sent you to me. Can you help? Well, that depends. Hmm. I know you journey here from Kare. Tell me, how fares that city? It stands still, the same as always. It stands still. Same as always. You have to call it. <laughs> the same as always, right? I've, I've, it stands. Sad Drak nods deeply. I watched an army of marsh goblins scale the cliffs armed with swords and axes. There should be smoke rising at the horizon, but I see no such thing. He grabs a handful of dry grass from the ground and tosses it into the fire pit where it blazes for a moment into flame. He appears to change topic. I must warn you that no one from Anilan has ever crossed the backlands alone and survived. The serpents? Yes, but not only them. The very rocks and earth here are lost. Things become unstuck. And you have now become unstuck yourself. I, I, I don't understand. He demonstrated with his finger as he speaks, twisting them together. The old world and the ancient world have grown together like thorny bushes. To journey through one is to journey through the other. Do you have any, do you have any food? The ancient world. You ask, looking about yourself with the fields of grass that have, have appeared to replace the desert. Ishtara, the place that was my home. You are most welcome. Unexpectedly, Shadrach stumbles. He smiles at you weakly. Ugh. Are you unwell? This whole land is unwell. I will not be able to stay for very long. <sighs> Please. Ask me what you need to know and then leave. Do <laughs> you play swindle stones? <laughs> you come all of this way to speak with me. And you want to do it by playing dice. Why don't we talk? Oh, you're, you're just afraid I'm going to win. I do not think so. And what do you think you have to gain playing swindle stones against a telepath? Is beyond even my cognizance. Do you have any food? My, on my three wishes, right? I asked the genie. Ask the, the mage the questions. I'm hungry. Uh, I want a car. And um, replace the toilet paper in my bathroom because it's low. Like, could I ask for anything worse? Like, I could get the answers to the universe. Do you have any food? That actually is important. I am too holy to eat. But if you can reach Karima, north of the river, you may be able to eat well there, if it still exists in your time. Most likely it does not. Shadrach is shivering slightly now. His face is pale beyond the ruddy beard. How did this curse come to be? The land was cursed by the Archmage to be forgotten. And so it has been. And so it will be. Not long now. And then all you will see will be gone. Only timeless desolation will remain. But why? Because of you. The Archmage punished this whole land to make a trap to kill you before you could kill him. He is a dangerous enemy, and he is quite desperate. Uh. I understand he has sent seven serpents to kill me. The hermit nods. Most seriously. The serpents are most terrible. I have often seen them. But they are no mere snakes. Do you know of their legend? Tell me. I don't care. Just tell me how to... Tell me. Yes. 
I can do that better. It is said that thousands of years from now, a few years ago for you, perhaps, the Archmage of Mampeng fought and slew a mighty Hydra, which dwelt in the caves of High Zaman. So formidable a foe was this creature that the Archmage took its seven heads back to Mampeng, where he used his dark arts to resurrect them as seven winged serpents. They became his personal messengers, his assassins, his force in a dark place. Thousands of years from now? Indeed so. Look about you. I fancy this valley was not green with grass when you entered it. He's right. It is the same valley and yet not the same. I don't understand what has happened. How much you ever lost on Swindle Stones? I need to get a better mic? Guys, there are no other mics that are better than these. You understand? I'm not talking through, like, a fucking $40 desk microphone. There's no, there are, there are no other mics that exist that are better than this. They don't exist. They genuinely don't. It's the, my room has loud sounds because the, the AC is always on because it's a hundred fucking degrees in Vegas. You got one guide? Yeah, of course. I'm gonna I'm gonna dip, I'm gonna defend myself. Do you have a fancy mic? What I use for a mic is not of your concern. Okay. What matters is, can I do this? Can I and can I do this? Or, and the answer is yes. <laughs> okay. Shh, quiet. You will. I don't understand what has happened. You will. But you will learn that for yourself. I must tell you this. Each serpent has a spirit to sustain it. That grants a great power, but also a powerful weakness. Discover these weaknesses and you may be able to defeat the serpents. Shadrach shivers and coughs. Friend, I wish I did not have to go, but I must, if I am to close the circle. He gets a stick and pushes himself up to his feet. They hear the background noise and they think it's your mic crackling. No, they definitely don't. It's because I, I have this background noise on this mic and I have to get rid of it because it's like... Mm -hmm. And if I don't get rid of it, then it's going to sound fucking ten times worse. It's hot in Las Vegas. It gets hot in here. I don't want to hear what you have to say. I don't care if you think it's a bad mic. I don't... All right. We know, I'm, now we're doing John Oliver. A good mic wouldn't do that. Guys, the mic that I had before was $700. And it did the same thing. It was a $700 mic. They don't, they don't get better than that. Do you understand? Get better AC. What are you talking about? I used that mic for like six years. It was a Newman TL2, whatever the hell it is. And everybody hated that mic too. The stream out of the fridge. I'll stream from the fridge microphone from now on. It's a skill issue. <laughs> Buy something good. <laughs> all right, now you, you're all just fucking with me now. I'm getting fucked with. He's a rich fuck. Guys, I bought that microphone I bought in 2015. I got seven years out of that mic. That, I got a lot of time out of that mic. And I might go back to it. It's it's possible. I, I used that mic for seven fucking years. All right, we got one guide, and I can't. It's derailing everything. Are you sure you don't think my voice just sounds like dog shit? It that's what it could be.
I'm gonna go. You know what? I'm gonna buy one of those. Okay, they, they look like they look like steam engines. They have like these dials on them with like compressing like looks like gas nozzles and shit. I'm gonna plug it into that and see if, if, if what people say. No, I, I have a mixer. I plug this mic with an XLR into a mixer. And without a noise gate, you would hear all the horrible sounds coming out of my mouth. Hire an audio professional just to tune your shit for a day. Yeah, just get in there and fix everything. The AC is going a lot. And so it's just like... Turn off the noise gate. No, it's, I'm telling you. We want to hear the horrible sounds. I'm going to turn the noise gate off and then see what people say. It's off. How do you feel? How you doing? How do you, how do you feel? That's a huge improvement. It it really isn't. It sounds nice and crispy. It's you know it's not it's not crispy. You know there's nothing. You know there's no crispiness that you're hearing. Try screaming. Ah! It's exactly the same. Chat is coping. Go plug in the... All right, I'm moving on. I'm not going to let one guy... De Look, everybody's audio sucks, okay? Everybody's audio sounds like shit. Everybody. If you turn the volume all the way up and you put your headphones on and you put your... And you just go, what, what's that sound? What does it sound like? I, 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 I turned off the campfire. Is that what you were hearing? I don't hear a difference. Well, this, this is this is it without the. Did I just get fucked with for ten straight minutes? Because they thought it was that. Then there's no, there's no way, right? I just, I just, I just, I, just, I got fucked with for ten straight minutes. Did that just happen? Because you heard this and you made a joke. About how my mic sucks because it's cracking like this. And then, wow, you really hit a nerve because he went off on like a 10 minute tirade about how. About how the microphone sounds bad. It wasn't just that. <laughs> okay, I'm going to turn this back on. Let me turn my settings back the way they were. All right, we're moving on. Okay, here we go. You guys ready? Nice sorcery stream. Prove you aren't naked. I don't have to prove anything. All right, here we go. Go, 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 go. Relax, 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 relax. Relax. Nice Rice crispy Mike. Shut up. <laughs> Come on, man. Do you understand? It doesn't... Okay, even if I... I, I okay, I'm going to do this. I'm not going to say shit. I'm going to hire a audio professional. I'm going to pay whatever they ask. I'm going to literally get an audio... I'm going to say, hey, I will pay anything you say. Come in and make it professional and make it unbelievable. And I guarantee, I guarantee the day after that, there will be a shitload of people in this chat going, Hey, this mic sucks. Wow, it sounds like you're inside of a bathroom. Dude, a nice, nice microphone. Are you, are you taking a shit? I guarantee that happens.
and I'm not going to tell you that, but I'm going to do it. And then I'm going to, I'll pay him whatever he wants. What I could write down a number and hold it up embarrassed being like, I can't say this number out loud because it's so much. And I'll go, yep, sit down, sit down and do it. <laughs> okay, let's go. Hey, by the way, that's the number you wrote down. Double it. I'm going to double what you wrote down. Their eyes are going to widen and be like, what are you talking about? I mean, just do it. Just do it. Make, and this make this the best audio setup you've ever done. <laughs> Let's go. And we get it. You're rich. I, no, that's not the point. I, I'm good. The point is, the point is you guys are dicks. <laughs> that's the point. Your noise gate's too aggressive. No, it's the art. Right, I just quiet and wait till when I hire this motherfucker. I just call them a motherfucker, but I'm very. I want to. I'm. Go, I'm gonna be their friend. I just said it because, like, I. You've got me. You're in my head, and now you're in there rent free. And I gotta get you out of here. We gotta get back to this. Now you're in there rent free, and I gotta. Here we go. I'm. I'm removing you from my head. No, no, not flexing money. No. No, what are you talking about? <laughs> Who is he talking to? I'm talking to the one person that said, hey, your mic sucks, punk. And I was like, hey, you know what? You're not going to call me a punk, too. And the person got banned. They got permanently banned. Well, that's a mean thing to say to somebody. Anyways. Where were we? <laughs> Dude, I can do it for a hundred thousand dollars. That's not happening. That's not how much that costs. <laughs> uh. <laughs> See, the problem is if I turn off the noise gate, if I turn off all the compression, it, uh, it's the microphone. If I scream into this mic, it still does it. With zero uh, mixer, zero compression, it still does it. You said anything. No, I said I would double what they wrote down. Seven hundred. This is this mic's not seven hundred dollars. All right, silence. I have had enough. I've had enough of this. We're gonna move on. I demand silence from everybody here. I demand it. Uh, here we go. Oh, you will. But you will learn that for yourself. I must. Quiet. Everybody's silent. I must tell you this. Each serpent has a spirit to sustain it. That grants a great power, but also a powerful weakness. Discover these weaknesses, and you may be able to defeat the serpents. <laughs> Friend. I wish I did not have to go, but I must. If I am to close the circle, now get out of here. And don't talk about my fucking microphone ever again. He shoves himself up. <laughs> Be gone, old man. I have much to ask you. We will meet again. We have already met, I think. He waves a hand at his cave. I have left one more thing for you in there. Travel well. Remember, when you walk through the fields of Ishtara, you are safe from the serpents. But if you do not return to your own time, you will never defeat them. Ishtara. This land. My land. Uh, how can I travel between these lands? Look through the beacons. If any have survived in your time, they will hold a little of our ancient light still. There is one to the north of here, at least, by the river. Go there. Reaching over, he places his hand on either side of your head. You feel a great lightness entering your body. That done, he turns and stamps away across the grass. And stamina, let's go!
DS Mike. Ban the word Mike from the chat. Ban the word Mike from the chat. I don't want to see it ever again. M-I-C, ban it from the chat. I never want to see it again. Okay. Let him go. He leaves, heading west across the plains and fading into the hazy dust that hangs in the air. You muse on what you have seen. It seems there is more to the backlands than there first appeared. You are left alone by the cave mouth once more. Can I, I, take some stuff from the cave. You look into the cave again and this time find a strange horn hanging from a hook on the wall. It is ornately carved from strange twisting shell. With a hide of leather, it is a gale horn. One of very few in existence. You lift it down with great care. What the fuck are they saying over here? Are they saying that word that I said not to say? How dare they? I can't believe they're actually saying these things. <laughs> M-I-C-K-E-Y M-O-U-S-E Blow the horn. You place the horn to your lips and blow a note. It is a clean and mellow pitched and makes the air stir with echoes. It is both powerful and likely to be valuable should you decide to sell it. You pause to look around the plain. Thin scrub grass stretches away north and west. To the east, the mountains are shadowing the sun. The whole world seems to have come alive around. But surely this magic cannot last. You make your way back to the old road that runs past the rock. To the north, you catch a glimpse of the tower Shadrach mentioned, covered in green ivy. West, you notice a young tree that surely wasn't there before. Sick. So this is the tree that we were at before. Let's go see it now. You head out across the prairie. The sun begins to dip, heading towards the horizon. You swat at pestering flies and the midges. The dead tree you saw here earlier is now a young, strong sapling. In its shadow, a woman sits cross-legged with eyes closed. You watch the woman for a moment. She's breathing in and out slowly and murmuring under her breath. Perhaps she's praying. Around her neck she wears what looks like a giant's tooth on a leather string. I've got a few of those. A fleet of long, thin birds swoop and career overhead, snatching flies from the steamy air. Steal the tooth. I have enough uh, teeth. I got two giant's teeth. No, let's greet. All the were oh yeah, Mike has been banned. All versions of Mike. Good. Good. Forever. You'll never be able to write that here ever again. Until tomorrow. <laughs> Audio input device. Come on. Give me a break. You approach the meditating woman and kick her. Why would I kick? Greetings. The woman opens one eye, then shakes her head sadly. You're meant to be over there, she says, pointing a little way to the east. What do you mean? <sighs> no matter. They tell me I will get better at divination with practice. She offers her hand. Um, sure. You shake her hand and she laughs. How very formal. Well met, stranger. My name is Elthira. Welcome to Ishtara, the land of peace and plenty. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, will you sit with me a while? Sure. You sit down on the long grass opposite her. She smiles at you. I need to practice my third eye. 
She says, tapping what appears to be a small gem stuck to her forehead. Perhaps we could play. And reaching into a pocket, she produces a handful of small stones. Swindle stones. She looks amused. Swindle stones? My teacher has used that name before, but that is not what we call them here. They are mind stones. I try to read your thoughts as you try to read mine. Will you play? You begin to cast upwards to the stars when Elthira catches your arm. Please. This is not a game of magic, but a game of inner sense. But you can read minds. That's unfair. No, no, I am learning. But the sense is weak with me. Please help me practice. What are we, what are we putting up stakes here? <laughs> Perhaps if you win, I will give you the dice. How is that? Okay. Okay, uh, Elthera counts out four dice each and waves at you to bid. Scammer? <laughs> uh, let's just, let's just do something, something wacky. Two ones. Hmm. Okay. Two fours. Three fours. I don't have any, so... Oh, shit, yeah, I do. Four fours, do it. For people, head north to Karima. For magic and a view, there are the beacons. The towers. But the real wonder is Lake Ilklala itself. Uh, I'm gonna... Should I call this? That means you have to have three. Call it. Mods are punishing us. <laughs> Dude, so, one guy has so much power. You do. Just so much power. I will, I, I will look over there and just see like three words. Think about that. Think of you just typing into a keyboard just like three or four words in a row and just pressing enter and it shows up over here and it derails the stream for like 25 straight minutes. You know what I mean? Think of the strength you have. Think of the power that you wield. <laughs> okay. Two twos? Uh, let's go three twos and let's call it. Well, you have to have three of them, so good luck. You're not very good at uh, seeing the future. Got two left. So you live out here? Oh, I didn't read this part. Okay, you've come through Kare. Two twos. I have three twos. It's such a small place. Shadrach says it will be important, but I doubt it. Four twos. I would not recommend that you visit. Call. Okay. It might be a cosplay. It's not a cosplay. Uh, two twos. Three ones. Um, I'll call you on that. I don't think you have two ones. You do? Shit, okay. That's fine. Where did the table come from? I don't know. It's, there's wood here. Oh, wow. I could, should I just start with three ones and just have her call? Yeah. Three ones. Call it. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, let me see. Uh, 
one. What do I not have? One four. Impossible. Wait, it's not impossible if you have that. Shit, I have to call it. All right, whatever. Whatever, whatever. It's easy to win a 2v1. It's fine. 2v1s are simple. It's so easy. 1-1. One, one. Shit. Shit. 1-1-3. One, one, Two ones. All right, well, you have to have a one. Three ones. Why would you do that? Call it. Yeah! Unless you're lying the whole time, which I hope you're not. You're not. I win. I win. I win, don't I? Elthira laughs. You are a challenging mind. Maybe play again. Um, no. I'm done. You are a feeble opponent. She nods, gathering up the dice. She drops them into your palm. Here, take these. You'll have better use of them than I. I foresee as much. I already have dice, though. Why would I? I already have dice. This is for it. I'll take them. You drop the dice into your pack without another word. She nods and gets to her feet. I must be going. Travel well. Come and visit me if you will. She waves in the direction of the cliff you came down when you enter the backlands. But quite why is not clear. Then she hurries away. Okay. The tree is relatively young, fresh, and strong, as though it has been only planted a few minutes before. It is hard to believe this is the same tree that you saw before. So tall and so very dead. But the position is the same. Okay. With the woman gone, you look around the plain. South and west, the great fault line of the cliff shields out the sky. And at its top, it seems as dark as night. North, the grass stretches away towards a distant flashing line that seems to cut across the land. You turn your attention back to the landscape. Sweet. Create a paradox. <laughs> All right, so where are we going? Back to the road. Let's go up north. I'm going to head north. You walk on across the grassland until you join an old road. The sun is sinking and the sky is turning bruise purple. It will be night soon again already. Away from the road to the northeast, the curious stone tower you saw earlier stands alone, overlooking the river. Towards the tower. Towards the tower. The road north. Uh, go, yeah, the tower. I, we, I'm gonna go to the tower because I want to show people something interesting. You step off the well-paved road and cut across the grassy fields that have somehow replaced the plain that was here before. The sun is now in the lowest quarter of the sky. Soon it will be dark. You reach the shadow of the tower you spotted while climbing down the cliff. Its sides are too smooth to be natural, and that there are no stones or brickwork. It's like a gigantic game piece carved from a single block of stone. Thick gripweed curls up and around the tower like wool round a bobbin. Beyond it, a river pushes past. Look for a door. Tug the grip weed. Look at the river. What's available? Please, my father, the Swedish chef, demands your opinions on cast iron or he will flame you on Twitter. Okay. Cast iron is a... Okay, here's the thing about cast iron. It's probably the best cookware, but... It's kind of a pain in the ass, and it's really heavy, and it's annoying how heavy it is.
Did you stop? Do Zen if I had the jewel, I don't. Can you put it in the dishwasher? I don't think so. We can't hear you laugh anymore. It gets cut off. Yeah, I, I'll fi I'll eventually fix the cutoff thing. I have no idea why that's happening. That's a, that's this mic problem. That didn't happen with the other mic. So I got to figure out why that's happening. Um, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Do do. Why do we do? We don't have a cat. Look for a door. You walk a full circuit of the tower, hoping to find a doorway, but there is nothing to see. The tower's sides are made of solid stone, if indeed it is a tower. From the very top, something metal glints in the sunshine. So now you agree. Well, I think the mic sounds fine. It's just sometimes I get cut off when I make a loud screeching noise. I think it sounds beautiful right now. Don't you agree? Don't you agree? Agree with me. Don't you agree? Uh, tug the gripweed. You give the gripweed shoots a sharp tug. The plant is tough as rope and seems to be firmly anchored into the stone of the tower. Uh, look at the glint. Craning your neck and squinting against the sun, you try to make out what the gleam is. Some kind of brass fitting seems to jut out over the side. Strange to see worked metal and stone out here. Wasn't this place supposed to be barren? You pause for a while, watching the river rushing past. The sound is calming, even though it is on the far side that the plains continue, and somehow you must cross. Let's climb up. Climb the gripweed. Quickly, you grab the gripweed and scramble up the outside of the tower. The roots of the thick plant offer plenty of footholds, and the ascent is easy enough. Soon you are hauling yourself over the battlements onto the top of the tower. At the top of the tower. You stand atop the tower, the wind across the prairie whips at your hood, and the ground seems like an endless green sea far below. Remember, this game has screen shake. Don't interrupt me. But the top is not empty. Indeed, there is barely room to stand. Most of the floor space is taken up by a large brass contraption that has been built into the middle of the roof. Look at the contraption in the tower. This tower was clearly built to house the brass contraption in the center of the turret. You look it over with curious interest. A large brass cylinder. It is set into the bearing in the center of the tower and protrudes a short way over the battlement. It is rather like one of the chief mage's telescopes but why would anyone set such a complex device out here in the wastes? You crouch to look through the cylinder, but find you cannot. It has no eyepiece. The near end disappears unbroken into the brass mounting of the device. The bearing underneath the cylinder looks as though it might allow the contraption to move. Furthermore, set in the central dome is an impressive looking blue crystal. The blue crystal is not a gem you recognize. It pulses with a small interior glow, as though something lived inside. You touch the crystal, but as your fingers brush the glass, something happens, and you feel yourself whipped up into the air as though catapulted. For a dizzy moment, you seem to stare down at the entire land of Badubak. Then a moment later, you're back on your feet, head reeling, but feeling curiously powerful. Touch it again. You reach out to touch the crystal again, only to catch yourself. The blue crystal on the contraption is flashing brilliantly, and then suddenly the cylinder ignites with a thick beam of syrupy light. The beam floods across the landscape, cutting through the mist and warping the view like a heat haze. The land in the light of the beam has changed. It seems the magic you witnessed earlier is happening again. Birds wheel and tumble in the air a short distance away. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Welcome to why this is the coolest, potentially, of the three episodes. It is two maps on top of each other. One in the past and one in the present. And you can traverse them however you see fit. Get Elden Ringed. So the question is, where do I want to point this? Down in the water? Over here to the bridge? So I can cross? Over here? Straight down over against this thing? Uh, I could also make this back to, to normal. What do you guys think? The cave? This is a flop episode. <laughs> Come on. It's a flop. <laughs> well, let's put it over here first, right? Or we could try to cross it without it, without the water and without the bridge, and aim it this way. Or go across here first and try to get over there back in time. Cave, cave, cave. Cave. All right, we'll do the cave. I'll point it back here. You adjust the beam around its track, sweeping light over the land below. The view is now partially lit with the beam from the tower, and a different land appears in its light. Birds fly, gentle wind stirs, pollen in a haze. The various towers across the game, you aim them. That's how you do it. There we go. With the beacon blazing away, you swing yourself over the battlement once more. After an uncertain moment, you find the grip weed and clamber swiftly down. Back to the tower's base. You scramble down the tower and drop the last few feet to the ground. And you leave. South of here, the Grand Road runs from west to east across the plain. So that is what we have opened back up. Is over here. This road is now... Back in time. I think it was a thousand, couple thousand years ago. Let's go back. Oh, uh, the road west. I think we can cross this now. You return to the road. Night falls. You should find somewhere safe to sleep. If you keep going through the night, you will be weaker for it. Especially after so long walking with an empty belly. Uh, I'm, if I can make it, I think I can hang out maybe in the cave? You abandon the road and walk across the suddenly grassy field. The moon rises, filling the world with thin silver light. You crest a low rise and look down across the grass, offering something of a view. Looking north, a wide river splashes spray into the air. South, you can make out Elthira's tree. And east the road makes a loop past the foothills of Vaudubac Ridge, passing an unusual double-spiked rock formation. And that's all there is to see. So, we're going to head back towards the cave. And it's really, really sweet. Alright, here we go. You make your slow way across the virgin grassland. This, then, is the pit of the backlands. It is not as fearsome as you had expected. Or maybe the sludge and grime of Kare has toughened your resolve. Indeed, in this strange magical light, it is almost pleasant. East of the Baudobac Ridge lie the Klatabak Steps, which you must cross to reach the lake. Return to the cliff. Once more, you enter the shadow of the cliffs that surround this place. The stars are flooding the sky. The grass meadow ends by the cliff base, and the carved stone steps that lead away from the backlands. I do need to sleep. You find an old foxhole and scramble inside. You've not eaten today, but you have no rations, so you're going to have to just deal with it. 
You lie back and try to forget your troubles. You're protected here. And your rest is untroubled by dreams. You gain considerable stamina and met Shadrach the Hermit. All right, here we go. You pull yourself out of your hole and stand up. The grass meadow ends by the cliff base and the carved stone steps that lead away from the backlands. Go up the steps. You haul yourself onto the first of the gigantic steps that leads up the cliff face. Halfway up. It's been two days and you're exactly where you started. Yep, but just like a thousand years in the past. You clamber up the carved rock. It is painstaking work as every step is about the height of your own body. Then about halfway up, you pause to rest near the entrance to a cave. The cave is clearly inhabited. A cloth hangs across the opening. Let's go. You push back the cloth hanging and enter the cave. Inside. Welcome, murmurs a voice from the shadows at the far end of the space. Who's there? I am armed. Or greetings. Don't we, we know who lives here? Didn't Althea say it was her cave? I was going to say it. Um, you're enabling him? Yeah, I didn't say it. Who's there? You call, waiting for your eyes to readjust so you can see. You hear footsteps padding forward over sand, and then a shambling figure appears. A woman with crazed white hair wearing rags of animal skin. You! <laughs> I had no idea I would see you again. Her voice is familiar from somewhere. But you've not met anyone so old since the witch above the waterfall in the Shumantanti Hills. Do you know me? Of course! You've not changed a bit. For I was so young. I was rather in love with you, as I recall. <laughs> Wait, what? With that, she steps forward once more, coming into the thin moonlight at the entrance of the cave. You gasp. Though this woman is old beyond imagining, you recognize her face. It is Elthira, with whom you were playing dice only hours before. How is this possible? You demand, afraid of whatever curse had befallen her. She laughs. It... Is this not normal where you come from? With my people, we change this way as time passes. It's quite normal. How long ago did we meet? You ask, horrified by what the answer might be. Uh, when we met... I was barely 16. And now, let me see. Uh, I suppose I am 113. If you don't count the year I spent as an eagle. She shrugs sadly. But welcome all the same. Uh, perhaps you are thirsty. From a corner of the cave, she produces a jug, which has been catching water dripping down the stone. Thank you. She pours you a cup and you drink gratefully and quickly feel thoroughly refreshed. It's been barely any time since I last met you. Can you tell me about the serpents? Do you have any provisions? How can I cross the backlands? Eagle fursona? Yeah, the last time I met, I was in... I, oh, yeah, the last time we met, we were at that fur con, and I was in my fucking eagle costume. Weren't you a gopher? Yeah, I was a gopher. I, thought, I knew I knew you from somewhere. Uh, all right, can you... Uh, it's been barely... Uh, let's get, let's get some, some lore here. It's been barely any time since I last met you. Well, then the curse on this land affects me, but not you. Perhaps you will be able to leave, unlike the others. What others? The others. All the others that survived the new crown. They wander the wilderness in circles lost, endlessly repeating themselves. Quite unstuck. Hmm. How many provisions? Ah, uh, I do not eat. I sustain myself through passive thought. It is a pure existence. Can you train me? If you have 50 years to spend in practice, uh, but I do not have so long, I fear. 
sorcerer. You're a sorcerer, are you not? I, 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 I'm a student of magic. She nods. There is a secret known only to the most powerful sorcerers in this land. The sorcerers of the fortress know it, I am sure. But they've tried to keep it a secret. Would you like to hear it? Yeah. Uh, Elthira nods in return. It is said, you see, that sorcery is unstoppably powerful. The sorcerers tell us that magic controls the world's very warp and weft. That once woven, a spell cannot be unwound. The claim is bold, but I have learned it is also untrue. Magic can be undone? Magic, some magic, perhaps all magic, can be countered. Just as the parrying blade can stop a sword. I have discovered one such counter spell already. The spell of healing opposes the enchantment of the fireball. I believe if one can recognize the spell being cast and one knows the form, then one can prevent that spell with the cast of the other. Counter spells. What about the most powerful spells? I have not tested it, but yes, perhaps even the most powerful spell can be undone. As she speaks, she draws a shape in the air, a horizontal line, a diagonal, another line. It is the letter Z. Interesting. Letter Z. Can you tell me about the serpents? Seven serpents? Suddenly her face is alive with activity and she hobbles back into the depths of her cave, returning a moment later, clicking her fingers. I have seen this, I have seen this in the stars. About the seven serpents turns the fate of man, and about that turns the fate of the world. I thought the seven serpents were stars. Up there. The seven serpents are real. They are most powerful. They're all but indestructible. If you see one of these serpents, stranger, I believe that you must run. I have killed many serpents. This is definitely going in this voice acting sizzle reel. <laughs> True. I have killed many serpents. Not such as these. Each of the seven serpents is sliced from the head of a hydra. Each is bound to an element of the world, to fire, or air, or earth, or time. She waves a hand. That sort of thing. And each only has one weakness. What weakness? A different weakness in each serpent. You must know them to kill them, but to know them is to be killed by them. And the whole land turns on this. So the whole land must surely fall. The woman sits uh, down quite suddenly in a state of some despair. They all have Pokemon weaknesses. Yeah. You approach her hoping to console her, but she does not react to your presence. She does not even blink. The woman murmurs softly to herself. Look around the cave. You glance around the cave, Elthira has few possessions to speak of, but your interest is taken more by the dust that covers the floor. Stone dust can be very valuable for magic. You scrape together a handful's worth of stone dust between your palms and slip it into your money pouch for safekeeping. The woman's third eye seems to glow momentarily. You step away from the old woman and look about for where to go next. Then, quite suddenly... She grabs your leg. I find them. But it will take some time to search. Come back. Then her eyes roll up into her skull. Let's keep going. Stepping carefully past the catatonic woman, you make your way further into the back of the cave. After a narrow passage, it opens out to reveal a wide space lit by a torchlight. The walls are covered with scratched writing. 
curious symbols and glyphs all in the same shaky hand. A little dust trickles from the ceiling. Be careful here. It's us. Rock turned to stone. How? Probably sus, right? Yeah. That's definitely the play. Consulting the constellations above you, bind the spell and a quiet voice enters your mind. It assures you that the cave is quite safe and the woman who lives here can be trusted. But it advises you she will have nothing to tell you until long after she is dead. That strange message delivered, the voice fades. Some of the glyphs on the walls are split, you notice, by cracked, crazed cracks in the stone. You look more closely at the cracks in the walls. It is as though the cliff itself is slowly shearing apart. One crack in particular spiders the ceiling and threatens to bring the roof down. Looking more closely, you see why. It is filled with a seam of some soft metal, which is slowly wearing away. Intrigued by the writing, you look over some symbols. They are a mixture of star signs, letters, numbers, and shapes you do not recognize. There's no order. It is as though their scribe was desperately trying to capture as much as possible of a dream before it was forgotten. The results are quite indecipherable, especially in the near darkness. And barely any space is left. Only one patch of blank stone near the base of the wall. Um, probably sun. Get a closer look, right? It's free. You wind the stars into order around you. The sun jewel starts to give off a magical white glow. The glow picks out details in the glyphs and carvings of the wall, letting you read several more clearly. The bridge will fall and the river become a chasm, reads one. The blood candle must not be lit. Do not eat from the larder of Throg. Okay. Sounds important. Uh, look at the blank stone. You squat down to look at the blank stone, but see nothing. It is natural rock. Only remarkable because every other surface has been etched or carved. Above the blank section is drawn a rude outline of a snake, followed by a hand and two vertical lines. Cast sun again. Will this kill us both? Dig out the metal seam. You dig at the metal seam with your sword, it is worthless tin and comes away easily. There is a noise like rumbling thundering. The stones above shift perceptively. Quickly you put your sword away before you bring the rocks down on your head. What else can I do? Summon darkness? Why would I do that? No. Rock. Could do sun again. Ah, ah. What does this do? You craft the spell and billows of black smoke emerge quickly from under your cloak. The back of the cave plunges into thick darkness, the torch on the wall disappearing completely from view. You wait, and after a few minutes, the spell fades and the fog dissipates once more. Let's do that for no reason. I may as well just have 
put my back up against a wall, standing straight up, standing back flush to the wall, heels against the wall, head against the wall, and just tilt my head down, and then throw it back fucking hard, and hit my fucking head against the wall. I just did the set. That's what I just did. I did the same thing. And then just leave. I just took damage for no reason. All right, you head back out of the cave, avoiding a cascade of small stones from a crack in the ceiling as you go. <laughs> you return from the rear of the cave. The light from your sun jewel pulses twice and fades. Elthira is still here, squatting in one corner and rocking quietly. What do the symbols on the walls of the cave mean? She shakes her head. Too much to see. Not enough space. Not enough space. Okay. Um. Can I make the space bigger? I'm going back here. Uh, how? Can't do far. Fog. I don't think this. If I could, I, but I don't have the right. Turn to. Should I do it? Turn to stone? I wonder what this does. How much stone dust do I have? I don't want to waste it. I mean, I just picked it off off of her ground. I'm going to use it here. All right, I get a rewind if it doesn't do anything. I'm going to rewind if it doesn't do anything. Reaching up to the stars, you create the magic across a handful of stone dust, and you feel the potential of magic entering your palm. You have a few seconds to decide what to do with it. Toss the stone dust onto the metal in the crack or toss it into the air. You toss the stone dust at the soft metal that fills the stone crack. It bonds instantly and soon the cracks themselves have turned to stone, healing the join. Whether this will be enough to protect Elthira's home, you cannot be sure. Is that a good thing? Was that good? Did I prevent her roof from caving in or something? I'm going to live with that. Uh, Elther is still here, lost in thought. Okay. All right, let's get out of here. The view below is quite giddying. You're one step from plunging to the pit floor. Okay. So we can go... We'll go up through here, maybe? Should, maybe I'll... Should I go? No, I'm going to go check this out in the uh, in the present. Uh, this, is the, this will be the present. So we'll go up. I could also come back here in the present time. Let's do that. Uh, move on. So let's 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 see what happens. I'm gonna take the thing away. We'll go back again. You carry on across the grassland, enjoying the soft chirping of the insects. The mid-afternoon heat floods the valley. From behind you, a voice says, excuse me. This happened already. Just ignore it. You ignore it. Another mirage like the one you heard before. Excuse me. Are you deaf? 
All right, you, tur you turn around to find a small boy holding a black face mask in his hand. He pushes it towards you. Wait. Where did you get that? You dropped it, the boy says. Thank you. You nod your head in thanks. The boy smiles, puts the face mask into your hands. Then he steps back and waits for something. Um, what do you, what do you want, like a reward? Offer him a reward. You look in your pack for a suitable reward. Um, here. Here, here's three gold. Okay. The boy's smile grows wide at the sight. Thank you. By Throff, I'm glad I followed you. I mean, that I was here. You know what I mean. He puts the gold into his pocket. Mm. You squat down onto your ankles to be more at the boy's level. He's clearly local and is likely to know a lot about the area. Where are you from? You ask the boy. Kare. Uh, but I run errands all the way to Tinpang sometimes. Huh. Where's Tinpang? Across the marsh, over the bridge, near the lake. You can run there in almost a day. The idea that this boy can cross the entire of the backlands is startling. This is the most dangerous land you know. The boy is starting to look twitchy. What do you know of the Seven Serpents? Nothing. Sounds like one of Shadrach's stories. The boy hops from foot to foot. Mm. So you know Shadrach? Of course I do. Everyone knows Shadrach. He's a brute and beats children if they make too much noise near his cave. Hmm. Um... He seems most ferocious. He hates children. He says they're all thieves and villains. I have to go now. I have to go. Where? I'm going back home before they close the gates. With a final nod, he in the other direction across the gates. With a final nod, he goes in the other direction across the grass. It is only later you realize he somehow swiped the... Ah! Well, guess what? Why did you do that? If you... I, that skull cap is so important. Uh, do we live with it and just not have the skull cap anymore? Do, how, do I have to live with some of these things. And he took three gold. I gotta stop being nice to people. And just, if it says punch in face, immediately punch in face. If it's just, oh, a punch person in face. Done. Punch person in face. I'm going this way. <laughs> yeah, fuck that. I'm going over here. Re I know rewinds, rewind, rewinds, rewinds. When he said he was from Kare, that should have hinted that he was a thief. Yeah, that's true. I forgot. I haven't played it in a while. Okay. You carry on tramping across the endless waste and the grass turns to dust as you go. The mid-afternoon heat floods the valley. The sunlight turns the dust of the plain to a bitter yellow. As you walk, you come across an open area dotted with 20 or 30 small holes.
Uh, you pull a goblin tooth from your pack and throw it on the ground, casting your spell across it. The tooth erupts into a column of smoke, and a moment later, a goblin warrior is standing in front of you. Go investigate the holes. You direct it to investigate the holes in the ground. It salutes, waddles over to the nearest, and peers down. A moment later, a jet of hot steam vents through the earth, knocking the goblin high up into the air. It howls in pain, as it flies up and then winks out of existence a moment later. The jet also knocks something free from the hole, which you pick up. It is a single polished giant's tooth with a hole drilled at the top. Part of a pendant, perhaps? You pick it up and put it in your pack. <laughs> a flash of something catches your eye, but by the time you turn your head, whatever it was has gone. Ah, uh, uh, well, I... Nice job, goblin. I ain't looking in the holes. That, not doing that. Gob for yob. Got an extra tooth. <laughs> All right, on to the bridge. The sun is beginning to lower. The air begins to cool. You journey across the open plain, approaching a curious black stroke that seems to have been drawn across the land. As you get closer, you see it for what it is, a gash in the land, thousands of fathoms deep. The road comes to a stop at the edge of a wide fissure in the ground and the ruins of an ancient bridge. The wind roars along the crack in the ground in front of you like a mockery of a river. Mm. Look down into the crevice. You creep to the edge of the crack to look down into it. It seems to drop for miles, the sides plunging like a waterfall of rock. The bottom is lost in mist, and the rock walls seem quite sheer. I wonder what will happen. Oh, look at the bridge. There was once a bridge here. The road runs up to it and a few stones push out over the yawning abyss. But as long ago tumbled into ruin, and now it does nothing but give you an impressive place to look down. Suddenly, you see movement at the edge of the fissure. Some kind of long spike reaches up over the edge, bends and hooks into the ground, closely followed by another. Whatever it is, kill it. A nap. Speed. Stench. Talk all languages. All right, we're gonna toss. We're gonna talk all languages. It's an earwig. Grabbing the wig from your pack, you pull it onto your head and weave your spell. But nothing happens. This spell works only on intelligent creatures and not animals. Wait, wait, no, 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 go back. I want to talk. I want to talk to the earwig. I, actually, I really genuinely, I want to talk to the earwig. Okay, 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 okay. All right, it's not, it's, uh, it's a different spell. Yap is... All talk with animals. There we go. Not languages. Yeah. Grabbing the wig from your pack, you pull it onto your head and weave your spell. The creature's clicking legs and rubbing jaws are suddenly transformed into words. Soft flesh. Don't run from me. Come to me. I am beautiful. As it talks, the creature keeps coming. It is a long... Six-legged bug with hooked jaws and a deadly-looking sting. The size of the one you sliced from the back of the manticore only days ago. Just run. Run for it. You waste no time, but, but turn tail and run. But the creature, whatever it is, is out of the crack and the ground and coming for you. Well, I wanted to go back here anyway. 
I wanted to go this way anyways. You hurry away down the old road and the bug scuttles along behind you, running along inside the inside of the fissure to keep up. It must be able to run much faster than you across the rock as it appears a moment later directly before you jaws wide open. The creature raises its long, sharpened jaws and seems to thicken its armor-plated hide. You steal your courage at the sight. This is a lynch bug, a ferocious creature that will be hard to defeat in battle. And it climbs inside of your ear, yeah. I could do law. Fireball. Uh, I don't have access to Jig. Wall. I'll do law. Law is expensive, but it usually works really well. You weave the constellations into a pattern around you, reaching out to take control of the lynch bug's thoughts. Its legs lock up, then it stiffens. It is waiting for your instructions. Walk the bug into the fissure or ride the bugs back. Ride the bug. You bring the bug close to you and clamber up onto its back. It is uncomfortable, but affords a tremendous view of the landscape. Order the bug across the fissure or ride the bug south. We gotta go, go across, right? You order the bug northwards to the edge of the fissure and ready it to jump. But although you control the creature's will, you cannot override its most basic instincts. Instead of jumping the fissure, it leans out over the side and begins to climb down the rock face into the depths of the canyon. Hold on. You cling onto the bug's antenna for life as it turns vertical. There's no way to get off. Oh god, down the canyon side. The bug continues its inexorable climb down the canyon side. It is approaching a large gray-brown mucusy something built onto the side of the rock wall. It's a lynch bug nest. And as you approach... You see it is crawling with hundreds more lynch bugs. The thought occurs to you that these ones will not be under the influence of your spell. Uh, should I hide? <laughs> or to climb up or crouch low against it. Should I just go in the hive and hang out? That's kind of funny. All right, I'm going to crouch. You hunch low against the lynch bug's shell, hoping to perhaps go unnoticed. Meanwhile, the bug reaches the nest and squirms its way in through a tight, sticky entranceway. Inside the nest. Everything falls into darkness, except for the echoing clicks of a hundred thousand lynch bugs and their young. This is fucked. Should I pray to the ape? Or just wait. Let's wait. You cling on and wait. The bug squirms along a narrow passage, almost scraping you off its back. There's nothing you can do but wait. The bug enters a wide chamber, presumably burrowed deep into the rock itself. You hear these sounds? You're in a wide chamber, chewed out from the rock of the canyon wall. In the center sprawls the vast, corpulent body of the lynch bug queen. Your spell has now entirely worn off. Uh, is it time for the ape to come and help? Wait. You hold on, hoping against hope or some means of escape. The bug you are riding bows low to its queen, and one of Her Majesty's 300 eyes settles on you. She reaches out a clawed limb 
and strokes the side of your cheek. We have to bow. Bow to her. You bow your head low to the queen's gaze, though you cannot tell if she understands the gesture. The queen raises two of her arms and intones a few words. A moment later, the clicks and rubbing of her front legs transforming impossibly into human speech. Greetings. You are the Annalander. Uh... I, um... What if that's bad? No? <laughs> um... I am. You reply surprised by this turn of events. Good. My enchantment will not last long. You stare in disbelief. The queen's raised arms make it clear what is happening. She has cast a spell. A variant of the rap spell, no doubt. Um, your majesty is most powerful. Should I cast something? What can I do? If this bug can cast a spell, then that must mean you are able to as well. You raise your arms to the stars, only to have them pinned by the lynch bug you rode on. I am pleased you have come. I have expected... Hold on, let's do this. I am pleased you have come. I expected my drone to eat you by accident. Your drone was sent to get me? I am pleased it did not. As am I. But you are the one. The serpent slayer of legend. Serpents? What do you mean? What do you mean, serpents? You ask, wondering at what this creature knows. The seven serpents of the Archmage. From an orifice in my underbelly, I'm going to pull out a claw and a gob of goo. This is monarch oil, smeared upon the serpent of water that swims in Lake Ilklala, and it will shrivel like a burned creature. She drops the goo into your hands. Holy shit, really? Uh, thank you. You nod and place the goo into your pack. The queen clashes together her, her antenna, which you understand is a nod. One more thing. Do not forget. There. Her remaining words are lost into clicks and scrapes and wet squirts as her spell fades. No, I gotta remember. Do, remember what? Uh, your majesty? I can't cast. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bow. Once more, you bow your head to the queen. The lynch bug who brought you here scoops you up and clamors out of the nest. That's pretty cool. Where the fuck are we? Oh, it marks it on the map. Um, I gotta be really honest with you. I don't think I've ever seen that. That's the first time I've ever seen that. I've never seen that happen. That was cool. All right, out of the out of the fissure. The bug clamors up over the canyon's edge and drops you into the dirt. With a final nod, it turns and strides away. Call a thank you. You call out a thank you to the bug, but it is already gone. You look around once more. A few birds swoop in and wheel in the crevice, turning circles that are way below you, and yet still high up in the air. We got earwig friends, right? That was cool. All right, um, we got to see. I, I, I'm going to jump across this, right? This makes the most sense to me. Or uh, teleport, but I don't have the item. Um, create a force field. Feels like it hurt. Floating is definitely the, it makes the absolute most sense. Float. 
You cast the spell, lightening your body weight to the mere fraction of normal jump. You eye up the width of the gap. Cautiously, it is a long distance made harder to judge by the featurelessness of the far side. You'll probably be unable to make it, at least not without aid. Go. Taking a short run up, you race for the edge of the fissure and hurl yourself out into space. Your feather lightweight means you hardly fall, but it also means the speed of your run up is quickly lost. You fall gently and calmly for a long, long way into the featureless chasm. Then with no warning, the spell ends and you speed up. Nothing else happens for some time. And then when finally something does occur, it is mercifully brief. So I wily coyote off the edge. Come on. How far is this chasm? All right, well, I think there's got to be a way to get over there. I could fix the bridge with the tower. There's no way for me to get over there from here. Cause slowness? <laughs> I have an idea. I'll cast slowness on myself. You cast, you cast the enchantment, but without any other creatures around, the only target is yourself. You feel no different once the spell is taken hold, but the clouds overhead seem to double their haste. Jump across. You eye up the whiff. You're probably unable to make it without A. Let's go. Taking a short, slow motion run up, you stride for the edge of the fissure and hurl yourself out into space. The chasm whisks away below you at a comical speed, and the wind that batters at you is not enough to slow you down. A moment later, you collide into the ground on the far side in a pile of scratches and scrapes. What? I made it! Wait, the slow motion jump works? <laughs> That's so stupid. I was just in slow motion the whole time. <laughs> The world moves faster around you. Okay. I did an action movie jump. Well, shit. I'm kind of stuck over here. You slowed your own physics down. I lost a lot of health. <laughs> and after crossing the bridge... That is where we're going to call it. So, I'm going to ask you the question. The question is, do you want to keep going with this? you still want to go through sorcery? I'm going to put it in a little, I'm going to put it in a box for a, a week or so, though. Because there's a lot uh, happening, obviously, in the next few days. Uh, let's go over a little bit of schedule here. I don't know the details of what's happening tomorrow. I will obviously talk about them. But at 6 p.m. tomorrow, at the very least on Myth's channel, going to be doing a Black Ops 2 event with a bunch of people. Go look at Myth's Twitter. I, I, I don't even want to spoil it for you. I want you to go see the teams. So. I may be live tomorrow at 6. I may not be. We will see. <laughs> Call of Duty Black Ops 2. That's right. And then Saturday... Uh, I won't be. Not, I will not be live on Friday. Saturday's green screen movie night part two, and then we'll do the mortuary assistant on maybe one, maybe Monday or Tuesday. I still want to play more multiverses as well, and I, I, I this I got to do a sponsor tweet for multiverses today. I don't want to forget to do that. But I want to play multiverses. I just want to play it 
It wouldn't be sponsored. It would just be me playing it. Play Stray? I don't know, maybe. But yeah, that's probably the plan. Is we got this Black Ops 2 event tomorrow. Um, I don't know the exact streaming setup, but again, at the very least, go to Myth's channel. Uh, Myth, I've, Myth is on YouTube now. So go uh, to Myth's channel on YouTube. That's where uh, it will be. When is baseball? August 19th. Stop bossing me around. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Black Ops 2. I'm going to get my ass kicked. It's going to be hyper embarrassing. But I will try. Green screen movie night Saturday. Mortuary assistant Monday or Tuesday. And then we'll go back to the backlands. Uh at some point next week. After we do that, after this next week here, baseball, I, I'm going to get ready for baseball. So, it's going to be uh, a lot of uh, lead time that I need to do up to that. So it's going to be fun. A lot of cool stuff going on. So yeah, we'll, we'll keep going. There's obviously 97, 98% of you said yeah. There's a lot to see still. And that's it. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow, maybe. Uh, if you're not going to check out the Black Ops 2 thing, then we'll definitely see you on potentially Saturday if you come to the green screen movie night part two. That's going to be starting probably around 4 or 5 p.m. Pacific. I want to do it at night because I think it's a movie night. It's better that way. And that's it. Are there a, is there a chance for a third movie night? Um, I'm, I'm not going to say yes, but I'm not going to say no either. It really depends on how much we can get through. It really depends on how many submissions I want to show. Uh, because after Saturday night, we'll have probably have gotten through about three or 400 of them, probably 300 something of them. And it really depends on the quality of the submissions that are after that. How many, how, mu how much time I want to give to it, right? But we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. See you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thanks for watching. See you. Good night. Good luck to whatever you're doing. Call your mother. You know the deal. See you for more sorcery next week. Take care, guys. See you soon. Thank you.